All right, welcome back, everybody, uh, to the New Year's Open, brought to you by RGN. I am Bach. With me is Sprawl. Right now, we have UB United versus Code, and it looks like we're actually going to get right into the thick of it. Uh, we were hoping that we, this match would get delayed just enough that we could see every round played out, and we were that lucky. We're going to be seeing them play against each other on Cash, Mirage, and Nuke. So we got to watch Cash played in the last match and the final map. We're going to get to see it in the first map right now, but we are getting into things right now. Pistol round is getting underway. Yeah, this is going to be an interesting one as we do see a different UB United lineup than what we saw in the previous RGN tournament. Uh, we do have Dim, Die, Potter, K Strong, and Miss Harvey. And then on the other side here, we do see uh, it's going to be Code as they are Remy, Wicked SV, Lopez, uh, Fallon, Fallon, Fallon. Um, yeah, Fallon, gotcha, and uh, Trevsta at the very end of that roster. So we are live inside of the pistol round here as we do see the bomb heading over to that A site. It is going to be a split as three terrors coming up from highway, but a little bit delayed as they're already in sight are the other T's. Luckily for them, they are going to get one pick. Wicked still alive in sight will eventually go down, and now it's going to be down to Remy and Lopez as holding from truck as Remy does get dropped. Lopez will pick off one, gets a second one. 1v3 situation does have a kit no armor is going to be peeking around this corner moving up a highway here we'll be able to get that freaking shot onto dim are you kidding me die we'll finally put lopez down but that was a decent shot there from lopez as he was actually the only one in that round for code to get some frags yeah, Lopez is quite an animal. Uh, obviously, you can see it there, the 3K. But I really am uh, impressed with the play there from Ubenited. Miss Harvey with the 3K of her own. Die and Dim finishing off the last two. Uh, a lot of people did not give Ubenited much of a chance to win this game because, obviously, they're females, so they don't stand a chance at winning, which is what people think when they think of CSGO, and I think it's kind of unfair. This team is more than talented enough to win games, and they've already started off nicely here, taking the first round and getting the first kill, and another, and a third. In there round we go. That's Lopez, Remy, and Felon down. Otrevsta drops to die. Last man standing is Wicked here, and Die's going to finish him off there. So another round in favor of Yumi United. And like we were saying, they're definitely not a bad team. They know how to play this game. They're not the typical silver one streamsters that you see on Twitch. They are actual real players, more than capable of hitting their shots and executing strategies. One thing to note, though, I think you can find four at least of these players on Twitch. <laughs> they yes, they, are, they do have they very strong Twitch genetic. presences. But what I mean is yeah, they're I not totally know just you. streamers. They're definitely talented players. No doubt about it. As uh, Yeah, they're moving up very, very early on. 2-0 and only three frags on Lopez from that pistol round. Dai has gotten three frags with her Mac 10 so far. And it, if you oh can get away with this on... A second and third round which not a heck of a lot of teams really go with i love the way they're playing this though they have rifles in the background these smgs up front so if that smgs goes down it's not a big deal they've they were weaker weapons anyhow if they pick it up yeah sure shoot at me with mac 10 i don't care they have ak-47s but the money that you get for those smgs is much better than what you would get from the ak-47 so sending them in first and die getting all those kills means that she's sitting on fifty seven hundred dollars right now she hasn't died she just picked up an ak She's looking really, really good. So UB Knighted starting this off very, very well. Those anti-ecos overlooked in a lot of scenarios, but quite honestly are very, very important for continuing your good economy in this fourth round as the gun round here is underway. Yeah, and so far the only kills for Code are the first round kills from Lopez. And they haven't gotten a single kill. They didn't get another kill at all this map so far. So that's three rounds in a row. Uh, where the only player who's gotten a kill is Lopez, and they all came in the first round. So UB United definitely playing, I think, much better than people may have anticipated. Yeah, we are going to see them uh, just kind of working this round pretty slow. Again, they realize this is the first gun round. Let's just kind of play it slow, see how the other team decides to play this out, kind of read the map a little bit as we do see Felon. He's going to be playing from a highway here, boosting up on Spindle. And uh, Dim will be working over towards Vents and actually jumping up in an awkward fashion, but Potter will be able to return that frag. Is now a 4v4 situation. The bomb is still way back behind the entrance to A main, though, so still working very slow, but 40 seconds left on the clock. They got to make a move soon, as we do see that's going to be Potter re receiving the bomb. And uh, looks like they're actually heading towards this A site, even though they have two of their players breaching into B right now. Yeah, they're, they're sort of playing the decoy right now, and it is working out. Miss Harvey gets the entry kill. Oh my gosh, if they can oh, just look at time this, this well. Die, 
and easy Potter peasy. able to get in, and Tremsta is right there, he doesn't hear them in sight, oh my goodness, and both the players on B still alive, so they might fall for this. Well, let's see how They're long just they stay now. around. Oh my gosh, they They're still don't realize still it. They still don't know that the bomb is planted A. This is an excellent fake from UB United. And Kate's Kate still Strong alive. able to get one. Is she going to get the other? No. He's going to try and get away. Wow. Potter finished him off. What a fake. What a round. No, that was great. And I feel like that's what, remember we saw what Area 51 tried to do with that fake and stuff? That, I feel like, is what they attempted to do. But that is how you play it to a goddamn T. They just, yeah, they completely fooled code into thinking it was a B plan. I don't think they realized even in that last frag, I think that when your bomb camp or your death camp switches over to where that bomb was planted, right? They're probably, wait, it was, it was A? It was A? I, I had no idea. So definitely a little bit fooled there. And now on an eco round, as we do see Remy does have armor, but he's going to be the only one that kind of put a little bit of economy into this round. Yeah, that, I haven't seen a fake executed that well in a long time. I haven't seen it just work that well. I, I know that Mouse Spaz, or not Mouse Spaz, Mouse Sports does it a lot on Mirage. They do some really excellent fakes, but I've never seen it work that well, ever. That was a fantastic fake from UB United. There's sort of a little bit of a sloppy round here from them in this anti-eco. They're able to clean things up, though. Last man standing is Trevsta with that AK, and he is way out of position. I don't know if he's going to opt to save this. He has more than enough to buy in the next round, but Remy is at 1950, maybe not in the best economic situation. So we'll see what he decides to do. I'm surprised he's moving forward, to be honest. And he actually does peek. Potter tries to take a shot there, but uh, isn't successful, unfortunately. Um, for her, anyhow. Code will be able to uh, save this weapon, or Trevster, rather, will be able to save this weapon. Let's see if he utilizes the same boost here near this box. No, he's just going to be hugging this wall here inside of the back of Squeaky. 1v3 is just going to try and hang on. Dim coming up to his left, and... That's going to be Harvey opening up Squeaky to the right, but looking in the wrong direction, that's going to be Trevs to going down and not going to be able to bring that into the next round. And one thing to note, five rounds on T side with zero rounds, one on CT side, UB Knighted has got to be just, I don't, yeah, overwhelmed with confidence right now. That feels absolutely great. Every single thing that you planned out, including that fake, worked to the T. Now, if you make it through this next gun round, you, yeah, they're just living the dream like, right now. They're living the dream. Even if they lose out at this point, curious, what was the first half score of the last map? I believe it was 10-5. And was then 10 -5. who won? It was the T side of Area 51 who switched exactly. to CD side and polished off. Now, close game, but still, they did win. So if they only yeah. get five rounds here, they can still win this game. Yeah, they are down two players right now, so there is going to be some frags, Trevsta and Remy both getting it to their own frags, so AWP frags, and one thing to note, they're only getting $100 for those frags, so although they are getting them, obviously they want to win this round regardless, but the AWPs are a little bit economy breaking in that respect, and that you, if you don't keep them for a long time and really utilize the heck out of them, uh, it really can hurt a little bit as we are going to see an A side play here. Three T's left on the field die, the lowest of the bunch. He's down to 21 HP, but trying to make it in as Trevsta, he's going to get dropped down to 17 HP. And uh, still just holding from the forklift side of A and actually getting a little bit aggressive there are the CTs. Miss Harvey will be able to get that frag. And now Felon trying to peek from Hazard will go down as well. And they're just gifting these 1v1s to the T side as Trevs is still just hanging on to this angle. Will eventually take down Die, but this is a 2v2 where it honestly should have never happened. They're going to be pushing on to site. Trevs will dodge that flash and he's holding a nice angle here. Gets the frag. Miss Harvey. Can she get the frag down to 17 HP 1v1 as Lopez and Miss Harvey are about to do the dance? Oh yeah, and there's eight seconds left on the round. She has to stick this, so Lopez knows she's going to be sitting in this corner by red box. Is she going to get the shot? Oh, here comes the duel. Oh, my God. Miss Harvey controlling that recoil, and Lopez, probably one of the better players uh, on this code side team, gets dropped by Miss Harvey. You, you know, it's something we talked about. Uh, there's a big like rift in CSGO where you, they, a lot of the male players don't really respect the female players. They don't look at them as legitimate teams. So you have to wonder what kind of players these guys are on code. If they're getting demoralized, getting killed by the female players that they don't necessarily look at as real players. I personally completely think it's BS. I think there's plenty of good female players out there right now. And you are seeing that firsthand here with UB United going up 6-0 T side on cash against a pretty talented pug roster pretty much for team code. So, 
I, I am uh, definitely liking what I'm seeing here. Miss Harvey, though, not able to pick up where she left off last round. Remy boosted up in mid, does take her down, and drops the bomb in T-spawn. So a big kill for them, kind of slow things down there for UB United, but still oh, a great start for UB United right now. I had to point something out. Potter forgot to buy armor. That's a little awkward. So she's got an AWP, $10,000 in the bank, but no armor. So let's see if that ends up biting them in the ass, because quite honestly, that's a mistake that definitely could um, end up in the favor of the other, especially with that aim punch and such. We'll get taken down to actually, that was a scout. How did that, that, yeah, so with those a leg shot, I guess, down to 17 HP, but that should have been a one-hit kill, as we are going to see some other trades happening throughout the map here. Only Dim and Potter left, and they are in a very odd situation, as 35 seconds left. Ticking away is the clock, but Potter will put down Trevsta, and that's going to mean they're going to open up mid here, and not really suspecting that this could be the scenario is Lopez and, well, Wicked in a good spot here, but Lopez now moving from Z back up to Truck, Wicked, he plays this oh, properly, no. should be able to make this happen as he will take down Dim. Will not peek out close left as Potter still playing from forklift. Lopez trying to just utilize the smoke grenade and I imagine Potter's going to walk out here and Lopez looks away at the wrong time. Will look back though. And that will be Potter going down in the first round going to code. And this is one situation where... You're not worried that you just dropped that round because you get an opportunity here to reset the, the loss bonus that Code was receiving for losing. So if UB United can pick up this one, this is just going to be beautiful for them. They're honestly looking at this probably as an opportunity. Yeah, they lost that round. They wanted to win out the half. That's, I guess, every team's dream. But letting them win one, well, not letting, but them winning one, and then you coming back with the next is quite honestly a great opportunity in this place in the game. Yeah, that was uh, not the worst thing that could have happened. If only they swept behind red box as opposed to in front, they probably would have got that bomb planted. Then it's a completely different scenario. Op sitting quad box, another man right there with a, or I should say another woman there with a gun, able to hold off the potential push. Could have gone in the way of UB United. But again, like you said, right now they have a chance to reset the economy of code. They're hit, sitting high on that loss bonus right now. If they lose this round, that's going to be maybe a, a double eco from code as they're going to be looking pretty broke. Yeah, we got a minute left on the clock here, and we do see that uh, Har Miss Harvey's already pushed up into checkered. We do see Remy getting that frag, but I don't think they realize that Miss Harvey's already in here, but she actually didn't see Lopez boosted on that box because of the flames. Hiding behind the flames. What a badass is Lopez as continuing to get frags in this round are the CTs. One player left in Potter, and uh, she she did buy armor this round, one thing to note, but peeking around the corner now, and we do see there is one player in Lopez at back box. One at alley, peeks up, doesn't get the quick scope. Now in a really unfortunate situation out in the open, and that will be the round for Code as they go up 2-6 to six now in this first half. I, uh... I like what they did there with UB United. They had the nice Molly play in sight. Tossing Molly's back. I guess that's why they didn't expect a man to be in sight, because in theory, the sight should have been burnt out. He shouldn't have been able to survive that, but the Molly just not touching Lopez enough. That Miss Harvey kind of gets caught off guard there by Lopez in sight. And that was a big entry. That was a big kill for them. If, if Miss Harvey gets the entry kill there, all of a sudden that B bomb site's opened up. Instead, it really shut the push down. And then they were just kind of left in that position we're like all right what do we do now Har harvey gets gunned down the entry fragger now we're stuck and the round just kind of fell apart yeah we are going to see a boost over mid here as die just trying to spam out a squeaky does spot a player and wicked up in uh the balcony there and does hop across takes a little damage for her effort but that's better than being stuck in that corner that nade actually putting her down to 43 hp so kind of getting lit up as her position is completely given away here trying to spam into sight as well sometimes that works out but potter will be the entry fragger as she does take down one peeks up towards balcony felony though manages to slip away just in time gets one in miss harvey as well but uh that's going to be another frag here for potter dropping it's going to be Wicked going down in sight, but K-Strong getting dropped, and now in a 1v2 situation, it's going to be Lopez and Remy. Remy goes down, Lopez now coming up from Highway. He should know that Potter's playing from this position over near A main. Flashes go out. He's going to try and peek these corners. I don't know if he spotted Potter there. Did peek out for just a moment. Ooh, this is planted perfectly, though, and this is going to be close. One second. Boom! Goes the op frag. And that is going to be UB United picking up another round here. And Code, they're going to want that one back as they quite honestly probably could have had that. But 
Just uh, Potter hitting those shots. Very nice play by her, making it happen. And now there is enough money on the side of Code to buy once again. But if they drop this next round, this is going to be... Yeah, it's not going to be good for them as UB United moving up to 8. But 7-2 is the current scoreline starting off round number 10 here. Yeah, you know, winning back-to-back -back rounds for Code, that was huge because they're able to buy yet again here. If they lost last round, obviously, they'd be very broke. And they, it's the same situation here again. They need to win this round, otherwise they're going to be stuck egoing. But at this point, the damage is done. UB United already up 7-2. They could lose out, go 8-7, and I'd still say that's a very good T-side oh, for damn. Cash. And then oh, you see damn. Dim getting into a very strange duel in mid. And ultimately, Felon comes out the victor. Die retreating out one. Felon gets another. Wicked SV taken down. Die. Kate Strong finally responds with a kill for UB United. Dropping Lopez. It's a two versus three, but Kate Strong down to six. Miss Harvey at full HP. And she is dropped by Felon. Felon now the 3K on the round. The man of the round definitely for code. And it's all down to Kate Strong here. In sight with six HP. And if she wins this, I would be pleasantly surprised and she does get dropped by wicked sv so a good round there from code sort of locking things up but again like we said at this point ub united has already done what they need to do and anything they get after this is just icing on the cake yeah i don't i'm looking at the stream right now unfortunately uh the stream didn't catch it but damn. again i hate to blame players going to like preview or talking about a round after it happens blaming a specific player but dim peeked out a highway Spotted a player, back turned at Hazard, started spraying, finished spraying, did not land. I think maybe a few bullets, but ended up going down to Remy, which was the player there. So not a hot play there, but we are going to see Lopez getting three kills so far. Can he make it a fourth and a fifth? He gets four, but Felon will be able to get that fifth kill and move Code up to four to seven here. As UB United, again, they still have to be feeling confident right now. Seven rounds on T, and you still have a few rounds on the half left. That's a great situation for them. Yeah, Code's got to be thrilled. Uh, th that round, even though it's just an anti-ego round, not losing a single player, it, even though they're down 7-4, that's uh, big for their morale. It's like, okay, we just completely annihilated that ego. Because the truth is, and it's something I've always thought, in North American CS... Players put a lot of emphasis on kills, so to be able to clean sweep around like that, it definitely makes you feel pretty good. And as I say that, Remy is going to boost over mid, get, take down uh, Miss Harvey, but get traded out quickly by K-Strong, so four versus four. But, yeah, you know, winning an eco round in that fashion always feels nice, even though you know it's an eco round. Yeah, no doubt about it. You just kind of get hyped behind it, especially if you're kind of in a position like they're in right now. They're down four to seven. You really got it find every opportunity to get your team back hyped and i think spraying down those ecos is a perfect opportunity to try and get everybody back hyped up as we do see lopez taking a kill on to die and that's going to drop the bomb actually as felon will get another one a k strong so two players left on the field that's going to be dim and potter and as they are very separated at this point dim trying to get a peek into sight doesn't spot anything and wicked actually getting aggressive up mid will take that frag and dim goes down as well so close to a flawless round there for code as only remy going down yeah, we saw that boost again, but it didn't really play into uh, effect the the shroud spot, so to speak, that big box in the corner of the A bomb site. And that's the second time we've seen it, and it's the second time nothing's happened from that spot. I keep waiting for it to happen because I love watching that spot play out. You, you, t most teams don't see it coming, just like we saw in that the infamous shroud clip. So I really love it when teams try and get a little bit cute and boost in these spots you don't really see played that often and catch people off guard. No, I completely agree. And utilizing those spots, I think you use it once and then you just it's just another thing in your playbook that you can kind of pull out, try and catch them off guard. And we are going to see an A-side play here as three of the players in UB Knighted are grouped up near Squeaky. Miss Harvey and Potter are about to come out through main and they will be able to drop one as code as Wicked will take down Die, but him and Miss Harvey get two. Felon was able to get a double of his own before going down, but 2v2 situation now as both of the T players are rendezvousing, grabbing that bomb. Is going to be planted here. Remy is close near truck, and now rotating from highway is going to be Lopez. Lopez definitely been a very key player so far in this match. As we do see Miss Harvey down to 19 HP, and they are going to trade some spray back and forth, but nothing happening too quick yet. As Miss Harvey now goes down, Potter 1v2 and jumping. That's going to be the Ooh. opportunity she needed, but 
Uh, it's going to be Lopez picking up that frag, and that will be their round as Code now moving up 6-7, to seven, trying to salvage this half. You know, we've talked about it a couple times now. UB United really doesn't win an need to win another round, but at the same time, you don't want to see them lose out after getting seven rounds because then their, their morale is going to be a little bit like, how do we end up losing 8-7 after getting seven rounds on T-side cash? You're still thrilled at your performance, but not the way that you obtained it. It's almost like if you lost eight rounds and then won seven in a row, you'd be pumped. But if you won seven rounds in a row and then lost eight to lose the half, you wouldn't feel the same way about the round. So they what definitely need shot. to try and get a couple more rounds here, or at least get a couple of close rounds. Just I like the round we just agree. saw. Sorry about cutting you off there, but Potter okay. just randomly shot through that smoke in main and hit Felon, which was in Z. Just literally fully smoked off, just randomly shot, lagged Felon. So down to 17 HP here, but... I completely agree that they need to get a couple more rounds in this half, or at least one more round. You need one out of these last couple here, um, just so you can kind of, yeah, feel what it feels like to win again. <laughs> because it has been a couple rounds. We've had four rounds in a row here for Code, and they've been pretty one-sided as well. Dim will pick up a beautiful headshot onto Wicked over near a highway. And again, Felon, very lit um, from that first shot that I was talking about by Potter as... They're going to be faking, it looks like, a little bit towards this B site. And Lopez fell, and you can tell they totally bought it as they were dropping some nades over there. But this will be an A-side play here. And it's going to be Harvey taking down Remy. Trevsta takes down Die, still alive in sight. Gets a beautiful quick scope again onto A highway player in Miss Harvey. Fell in, and, or rather, in uh, Potter. So 1v3 situation. K strong. Can she... Pulled this off, stuck in a very odd position. Actually took Trevsta down to 48 HP, but that's going to be tying things up here as 7-7 seven to seven is our scoreline. Yeah, Trevsta with the 4K there from Quad really just stopped that altogether. UB United looked poised to take the A site, and he just sat back in Quad and just took his time to hit his shots, got the 4K, and uh, what can you say? You know, UB United seemed to have the round in their hand, and they just kind of let it fall apart. And you could hear them in voice comms, how did we not kill that guy quad? And it was just it came down to how they took the duels, peeking one by one and letting him just pick them off. Okay, Strong going to go down early here as Remy kind of playing that classic angle from B site, looking into uh, back of B there, B main. And uh, that's going to be an early one as still a minute 20 left on the clock here and not a pick in sight as Remy is going to get dropped down at least to... Uh, 59 HP, but we'll take down Miss Harvey eventually. Felon, he'll get dropped here. Remy's down fairly low as well. Die picking up a frag, so that's going to wake up this round a little bit for the tease as 3v3 situation is happening here. Yeah, we do see the emphasis on mid, just like we saw in the last game on cash. Dim Die and Potter left standing here, and they're just trying to slowly feel out what's going on right now they have a two-man hold on a and the single man in b that is lopez sitting behind bomb box he does have full hp so he's gonna need to hold this off if he gets taken here this round could definitely go in favor of UB United, and that could be the kind of lead they needed coming into the end of the game and he's gonna get taken down by the molly from potter the nice bank nade molly from potter there plus a little bit of a dink damage to the box Makes it a one versus two right now as Remy did get the kill there. And he's stuck in heaven being double peaked here. But he gets the first one there. That's Dim. And it's now Die versus Remy here. Op versus AK. And time is running out. Ten seconds left on the round. She's going to have to go for the plant. And she does opt to do so. Remy just trying to hold this angle. It would be the ace if he gets it. And he does get that ace. The 5k in round 15. Taking the final round here. Putting code up 8-7 at half. Definitely a big round play from him. And that's exactly the round that UB United didn't need coming into the halftime. You know, losing that round would have been worse, or would have been bad, but losing to a, a, an ace, terrible. I hate getting ace personally, and I know that every other player that plays CSGO feels the same way. No one likes feeling like, how do we let one guy kill every single one of us? Especially when you're in a situation where it was one versus three. You just, it's demoralizing. Yeah, no, there's no doubt about that, and we'll see how much it really affects um, the CT side players now in UB United as they have switched over. And one thing that uh, I remember 
think the last time I casted Yumi United was with Sadikus by my side. He had mentioned how Miss Harvey and her pistol get along very well. They do a lot of good things, and they shoot a lot of people in the head. So they should have, I wouldn't say an advantage, just because I don't know, other than obviously the one pistol round that we saw already, which honestly Yumi United took fairly easily. Uh, the, yeah, we'll see if UB United can pull it off here as they definitely want to get the momentum in this half, being now down, having the round lead all the way up until that last round of the first half here. They they really want to get things back in their direction. And uh, the way to do that, got to win pistol. So we are going live here, round 16 in the RGN year, uh, New Year's Open tournament. So this is a best of three. We're in map number one, and pistol round is live. Yeah, we're going to see two five sevens picked up by Die and Potter. USP's on Dim and Harvey and uh, Kate Strong there. One of the kits, Dim with one as well, and a double flash P250 by. And right now they're just they're hoping to uh, hold off this B bomb site. Here comes the push. Dim with the one tap shot onto Felon. Can't hit the second shot though. That's Trevs to storming the site. And there's one in the site. That was Miss Harvey holding behind double box. Not able to get the kill. Die coming in though, taking down Lopez. Makes it a three versus three. Bombs planted and ticking away, but they do have a kit on Kate Strong. OMG, it's Potter with the nade and Die, the 5 7. Getting that one kill so far this round. Or I should say one of the kills this round. Potter comes in, takes down Remy after she took uh, after Remy took down Strong. Potter another kill with that 5-7, making it a 1 versus 2 here. Wicked behind the box in sight, not able to hold off the push. So die with the 2K, Potter with the 2K as well. Dim taking one out, and there's that kit by definitely paying off for UB United here, tying up the score at 8-8. Eight to eight. And they're going to hope to get that early advantage on CT side, possibly take it to a 10-8 scoreline. They did just let the bomb plant go off, so Code could very well force by in the next round, depending on what happens right here. For sure. And I don't know, did you see where Remy was playing there? So uh, he, he posted, he, he pushed through CT connector, and then he went up to heaven, but stopped halfway up the ramp and just basically hugged the wall in a way that was pretty much impossible to see. He had a golden opportunity, only got one frag, unfortunately, was traded upon, but that was a beautiful position for him to play in. And regardless, uh, we are going to be moving into the second round here, and Dai already taken down to 30 HP. She ate uh, a shot from the P250 of, I believe that was Lopez, as he was boosted up, and now dropped down. He actually had the bomb, so that's always an... Uh, a very risky situation. Dai will be able to finally return back, but with 30 HP, not looking to re-peak here, and that's not a bad move at all, as we do see two players heading into the A site. That's going to be Felon and Remy just trying to make some noise, as, again, the bomb is still mid. We have Trevsta and Wicked hanging on to that there, as K-Strong will put down Remy. Now Felon just boosting up, and actually in a very odd spot here. He might be able to catch someone off guard, and he does. Potter goes down. Now from Quad, that's going to be Kate Strong picking up the frag. One player left in Wicked, and he's going to be able to fall back to Truck here. 5 HP on him. Gets the headshot onto Kate. Oh my god, it almost drops Dim. 4 HP. What a god. That was nuts. Wicked. Making use of that P250, he's going to be feeling decent after that, as UB United will pick up that round, but not without taking some damage. Yeah, a nice eco from them getting the, I think it was three kills, correct? They got three kills. Yeah. Die, uh, Potter, and Kate all dropping. I think it was down to Dim and Harvey. Yeah, um, Dim got dropped to like four HP or something. Yeah, insane. More nuts. than a decent enough round. They definitely did what we've been talking about over and over and over again with this map. Mid control, mid control, mid control. Dai got taken down low early in the round. She had to fall back, and as soon as they had that opportunity, they took it. And ultimately, it almost paid off, but the uh, the rifles outpowering the pistols there gave, gave Ubinated just enough of an edge to win the round. But here we come into the first full buy here, and uh, Wicked's going to start things off. Taking down Dim. Miss Harvey pushed up pretty aggressively behind this big box. It'll be interesting to see if they decide to peek this and they do opt to fall back. Potter's going to respond with the FAMAS kill onto Lopez. Pick up that AK and fall back wisely. Unfortunately, she's going to run into two people on highway. That was Trevsta and Remy. And here comes the push left to push Strong right with... into Zeke Hector. Look at Kate coming from behind. Oh, darn. Does get the bomb carrier, and the bomb is now down in vents. These players are pushed way too far. Talk about overextension as Remy and Trevsta now pushing through CT back towards B, but to collect the bomb from this angle with 35 seconds, they need to get this pick. Okay, now you need to get a boost up inside of there, and that's just blatantly obvious that 
that that's where the bomb's down. Die knew it was there, or rather Kate got uh, that bomb dropped, but Kate just takes a bullet to the head, goes down to 14 HP. 2v2 situation. Harvey will be able to get that frag, and now one player left in Trev's just holding this angle. They do not need to peek. 15 seconds left. Oh my goodness, they're going to get the frag, but that was terrifying as UB knighted. They're going to force their way to that victory, collect an op for their efforts, and what a round as Code just looked a little too confident. Yeah, and UB Knighted actually played that last kill a little bit sloppy, but smart. They, I think it was Potter went for the kill, didn't get the shot. I don't remember who it was that was in vent. They went for the kill, didn't get the shot, and then Miss Harvey re-peaked. He can't peek both angles at the same time, so you're basically playing that op delay, and then you know that he's not going to be able to get both of you. So it's better to take the op out of his hands than to let him live. So they played it wisely, and here we see that op that they just picked up. Working out nicely so far. Remy down to 8 HP early in the round. Dai is able to find the head of Trev Step. Potter finishing off Wicked SV with the AWP. Miss Harvey getting a kill onto Remy. It's now two left standing. Lopez and Felon. And uh, I do believe that that shot from the AWP in Garage is what took Remy down low. I can't necessarily be certain of that. Miss Harvey coming in, finishing off the last two. Felon and Lopez down. A nice anti eco there from UB Knighted. And uh, you're going to see another buy here from Code. So no double ego from them. Yeah, and I think having Miss Harvey top fragging right now, it's really good for UB Knighted. I feel like she's one of the players that would get the team really hyped if they needed to be. And again, they're kind of riding behind her at this point, having 20 kills. Kind of like the Arya effect that we saw in the Area 51 group and that they're really getting that frag and behind that they're really coming together. As Kate Strong, she's got seven frags, but again, no one really um, not putting in their work here as we are going to see Potter taking down Remy early on. That was uh, at that boost spot. They are able to, I believe that bomb was up there momentarily, but has been retrieved um, as they are just going to be sitting right outside of this boost area, but die peaked up. Will take down Felon, tries to get a spray down. That's going to be Wicked coming around the corner, gets another one. That spray almost lands. And she can hear Trevsa trying to work towards a main here. Two T's left, one in Lopez, one in Trevsta as they do try to work over to this A site. Yeah, and uh, oh, Lopez able to get the little wall bang headshot on Potter, dropping the AWP in sight, making it a four versus two. More than enough time right now. Lopez oh, getting into a bit of a duel here. K Strong is dropped by Trevsta. Die peeks up with the AK and rips the head off of Lopez, who is also traded out by Trevsta. And finally, Miss Harvey coming in and says, Enough of this. Taking him down with the M4A1S. Gonna pick up that AWP. Take it to 12 8 in favor of UB Knighted. And uh, I think we're gonna see another buy here from Code. Yeah, they should be buying here. But still, a nice round from UB United. They didn't even take, like, any damage that round until about a, a minute left when players started dropping. Yeah, exactly. It actually was a little bit scary as Kate, Kate went down at Forklift there. She had, like, 8 HP and eventually went down. So they had a little moment there, but Die just hitting some shots. And Potter is going to get one as she drops from heaven. Gets a second one. Dim's going to try and help out as both players jump. No one dies, and Potter still alive. Will get traded upon coming down from the vents, though. Oh, that's going to be... Yeah, that's going to be Die jumping down and not working out in our favor as Wicked will be able to get that bomb plant. Only 14 HP to his name, though, as we do see Kate peeks out, gets the headshot. A little bit of overkill there, but not a problem as they do get that round, pushing this to 13 to 8. I don't even think it should have gotten to that point. Die jumping out of vents should have been able to take down the bomb and maybe one more. I, I don't really know what happened. Maybe Die just got a little... Uh... A little overzealous there, missed the shots, got taken down. It, they still ended up winning the round, but a little bit sloppier than maybe it should have been, considering Potter got the 3K. And I think it was Dim that was in checkerboard, wasn't able to take down anyone. That sh that push could have been shut down really quickly if Dim had maybe taken down one, because Potter was just lining up shot after shot with that AWP. Yeah, I know that worked out uh, well for Potter, at least. Couldn't uh, maybe <laughs> necessarily say the same for Dim and Die, as they missed a couple shots, but regardless... We are going to see another B-side play as Harvey will be able to take down one Wicked Trades, though. And Dim will be able to trade right back to Felon. Now coming out through the vents, Dim was able to get two kills for her efforts. But we do see Remy, last one alive, takes down Die. Now a 2v1 situation. Does have the bomb site cleared out. Real Estate is under his control. But Potter's still alive. Kate Strong's still alive. Both with kits fully equipped it. They're going to be trying to retake the site here. So 48 HP on Remy as he's peeking from this 
bomb site here as he does hear that shot rattle off from Potter. Peeks out and Potter gets the shot immediately. Not going to miss that one. And that's going to put UB Knighted up 14 rounds here as they really want to take their map pick. As we did, uh, we did see that they started on the T side. So unless code was like uh yeah we'll uh we'll or unless yeah unless code picked it and ub wanted to start t which i highly doubt is such a situation uh i'm 90 sure that this was ub knighted's map pick so 14 to 8 here as they're looking to close it out we are going to see ak-47s across the board on the t side but they're going to need to pu pull something out here if they want to stay in this match or this map rather how many in a row is that for ub knighted at this point that is well, That's, there hasn't been a single. There hasn't been a row? single. There's seven in a row. Yeah. There hasn't okay. Been a so there are. They're, round. they're at the full, uh, full loss bonus right now. Yeah, Lopez will be able to take down Kate as she tried to get aggressive and squeaky here, and that's kind of where as a CTT maybe you mix in those aggressive plays a little bit once you've had all the success that they've had, and Potter, oh, oh. she really wanted that one as that leg kill, or rather that leg shot, not a kill, does come through, but die in a very opportune position. She's going to get a frag from a main, gets a second one, and that's a difficult call to make with that silencer on the weapon as we're now going to see Miss Harvey coming up from truck side. It is going to be Wicked taking down one 1v1 Ooh. situation, and Wick, Wicked will be able to take that frag and puts code up to nine rounds that's going to be their first one on the t side and uh luckily though for ub uh ub knighted they do have enough money to get another buy in here you would hope so anyhow with seven rounds in a row they do have enough but just honestly it's a bit of a squeak out yeah you know it's, right not, it's it, not even fair to call this like a one-sided half because every round has come down to like 1v2s and 2v2s and I think that's why we see the money situation the way it is. We do see they've all bought, and they're now all broke. Other than Kate having $1,100 in the bank, everybody is very, very low. And Dai is going to go down very early on here, trying to get aggressive up mid, and that's not what UB Knighted wanted at all. Kate now in a, an opportune position as Remy right around the corner just posted up near... Ooh, we'll get a bit of a spray down, but needs to be careful as Remy's right around the corner. That's going to be Potter hitting that shot over the shoulder of Kate. As still holding on to that middle control is Lopez, as the rest of the players are going to be rotating back to the B site. Miss Harvey, only one alive over here, and she has her work cut out for her as three terrorists are heading her direction. And yeah, she's going to have to hit this lead shot. I'm not able to get it. Finally finishes him off. That was wicked. Slowing things down a little bit, able to get out some information for the team. Treps are finishing her off, but it's now a three versus three retake here as the bomb's going to be planted. Dim in really good position. They're calling out. <laughs> Never mind. I shouldn't say what they're calling out here. But uh, I'm hearing the call outs coming in from the, uh, the team code. And Potter with a nice shot onto Lopez, just completely ripping his head off. Really impressive with the off thus far. And here comes the Molly, smokes and nades into sight. Fell in the last man standing as K Strong takes down Tresta. He's got the Galil, gets the first one, not able to get the second. That's going to be map point now. 15 to 9 in favor of UB United on the back of another 3k from potter and i'm very impressed with potter's op right now yeah she's been looking really really good and i i think in the last time that we watched them they had die utilizing the op more um at least and i'm remembering back to inferno i believe that she was the dedicated op when they were running on inferno i feel like someone told me that they actually change it up depending on the map um, but definitely Potter looking really, really good right now with that AWP in hand. And, they, yeah, match point right now. Nine rounds for Code. They really need to come back here. They need to put six rounds on the board to bring this to overtime. And only one round is Potter peeking out, gets Trevzda early on. And that's an aggressive pick that really should boost the, the sales of UB Knighted as Kate Strong will follow up with a second frag here. When you're feeling it, you're feeling it. I mean, when you know you're hitting shots, you just start getting into positions that you probably shouldn't take, and you get the kill anyway. And that's what Potter is doing right now. Potter is taking a position that maybe should not play into her favor, and she gets the kill regardless. Lopez is able to take down K-Strong, but traded out quickly by Dai. It's a 4 versus 2. Right now, Dai at 12 HP. They still have the bomb in hand, and it looks like they're opting to move towards A. Wicked with that AWP, Felon with the AK, and Potter in strong position. So far, Potter has been unreal, so we'll see what happens here. And they are going to peek out. Potter misses that first shot and gets the second one. The Wicked was lined up and everything, oh and Potter's going to close it out all by herself as getting three frags in that round, closing things out two frags short of a 30 bomb as Potter is going off right now. So, guys, that is the end of our first map. Our second one is, I believe, we're moving into a Mirage once again here as that's going to be the second map choice, I imagine. Again, UB United picking... Uh, 
pick and cash. This would be Code's map pick. So that's going to mean that uh, UB Knighted, they're going to be starting on that CT side, or at least I ventured to guess. But regardless, guys, we're going to take a very short ad break. Please don't go anywhere as we have some more action coming your way.
All right, we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Map number two of UB United versus Code. We are starting off here. As we can see, UB United on that CT side. This is a Mac Pip pick for Code as I struggle through that sentence. Myself being sprawl by my side is Bach, and we are more than happy to bring you map number two in the RGN New Year's Open. How's it going, Bach? Are you ready for this map on Mirage or what? I certainly am. I really like Mirage. It's one of my favorite maps. And I was very surprised by the way that UB United played last map, so I'm excited to watch them play again. Uh, I know that was their pick, so I'm seeing how they're going to do on a map they did not pick. We do see Code getting the early advantage here as Lopez, with this the help crazy. of Felon, taking down Dim. Look at this creep in B Apartments here, and Kate Strong catching on to it early. He's going to toss a nade out by Van, not really do a whole lot of damage, and she's going to get caught out by Remy. So here comes the bomb plant over on B. So a bit of a, a fake there, maybe taking a, a page from UB United's playbook. Potter with the one tap. That was nutty. Gets another one as well. Tremsta is down. Potter has just been hitting shot after shot. The USP definitely uh, very deadly at this range. And she's showing you exactly why. Lopez is going to get one. That's Harvey down. Another oh my one God. tap for Potter. That was so insane. Potter... Just one-tapping, ripping the head off Lopez as he leaps over the balcony there. And she's coming into the site here. She's going to get spotted out by Felon, who just can't find the shot. I don't know how she's still alive here. And she's going to take these players with her, so no armor save for <laughs> either one. Night. That's actually huge. Felon and Wicked both had armor. They're going to have to rebuy that armor in the next round. But Potter with a 3K and some insane one-taps in the pistol round here on Barrage. Yeah, Potter looking really, really good there, but Code just playing that fake to the T, sending two players out into A, clearing out A more or less, even getting a frag over there, and then basically keeping the other three players and pushing them into B as soon as they basically know that the rotate had occurred. And you saw the way Kate threw that nade. She did not expect them to be piling out of Palace that quickly, um, or rather apartments there. So a little bit of... Uh, mind games going on here code looking really good in their first t side pistol round and that's what you need on the t side of this map like we were saying if you have a very figured out ct side if you know how to counter properly uh you can do lots of work on ct side mirage so we'll see if UBNated united has what it takes to pose that stance but first and foremost we do see a frag going to lopez mac 10 kill a la die from cash there as they are going to be pushing up into this A site. Dim trying to play in that <clears throat> awkward, lame, happy spot, but kind of peeked out awkwardly and will go down. Uh, yeah, uh, Dim was in great position. A little bit more patience probably would have paid off. You could actually hear over voice comments in game saying, I thought they would check it, so she peeked anyway. Gets taken down. Die dropped as well. Potter and Kate Strong, last one standing. And it's going to be a 2v5 here. Wise buy from Code, but not necessarily their choice. You see the Bison on uh, Trev and the Mac-10 on Lopez. It's not because they really wanted to buy them. It's because they they lost everybody in the, in the win. Everyone died. So they couldn't really afford to pick up Galils and everything because they had to buy armor. You're going to see Potter there. At least get a Mac-10. She's going to attempt to maybe try and get... Oh, okay. Yeah, she she doesn't want to save that because there's no, I don't know. She wanted to take away another weapon is basically what she was attempting for there. Didn't work out in her favor, but that MAC-10 save quite honestly wasn't going to do a heck of a lot anyhow. So we are going to see Code moving up 2-0 here. And uh, they're not going to be upgrading any of those weapons as we do see Trevs to still rock in the Bazone and uh, Remy with a P250. So they are going to be heading towards, it looks like we got... Felon just checking out mid very, very quickly. Remy heading down to o underpass. And uh, Dai should be able to hear some of this action as she is posted up on Cat. Remy just holding that headshot angle, hoping for Kate to peek. But we'll peek out, and that's going to be Harvey going down. But Kate Strong will drop from the window room and will get two frags for her efforts as... Now we are going to see a bunch of frags here from Wicked. He's got a triple. Can he get a fourth one? And Trevsta will put an end to the madness. But that's going to be three to nil as Code moving up. Looking pretty good on their T side. But this is going to be the true test in the first gun round. A little bit of a sloppy ego. They got the two frags, but they probably could have taken down Wicked as well. They just all played that kind of individual peak role. 
There is someone on cat hiding behind the smoke. Uh, one in connector and one in window. First player jumps out window, gets killed. Second player peeks out connector, gets killed. Third player pushes the smoke, gets killed. They, if they peeked at the same time, they easily could have taken down Wicked and then gotten that Galil, and they, they would have really changed the round entirely. It would have been a three versus two with, with guns in hand. Instead, they lose that ego, and that would have been big too because they would have been putting code in a really nasty situation with their economy. But nonetheless, we're coming into the first full buy here, and I'm kind of... Uh, anxious to see what UB Knighted has in store, as I am about code. Yeah, and the bomb isn't going to be coming into the A site here. Dim is about to be tested as playing this bomb box will get a beautiful shot there until Wicked gets a second one here. USB in hand now peeks out once again, and Felon will eventually put Dim down, but that is going to be a lot of work done there. As now Die just trying to peek up and actually jumps up, will get that shot. Beautiful one from her as. That is going to be an AWP frag, and that's the round that UB United needed. The first gun round here, the fourth one, that was the true test for code, and now that they've dropped that one, they do have a, a good amount of money to work with here. Felon, only one down to 2,600, uh, but he will be able to receive an AK buy from one of his teammates. Die made up for the, the whiff shots there. Uh, she kind of let Trevsta peek out of Palace, missed the cross shot, missed him wide open in the middle of the balcony, by boosting up on that little box, that box shot there definitely made up for the, the misses. Closing out the round. But we're still going to see another op here on Trevsta as they did have quite a bit of money built up on code. Saving a lot of guns in the previous rounds. So it's not necessarily a great buy. You see Trevsta with body armor, but everyone else on the team pretty stacked up for nades and armor. So it could be a big, a big round for code to win or lose here. If they lose this, they're going to be really broke. We do see Remy dropped early by Harvey, so definitely starting nicely here is Team UB United. I don't know if Miss Harvey saw that, but out of the side of her peripheral as she came down down the stairs, Trevsta peeked out. And again, I don't think she saw it on her screen, but she's not peeking in that direction any longer. Dim underneath the palace will take down Lopez. Three Terror is still alive as we do see Felon all by himself pushed up a ramp if he goes down there is going to be no refrag there and has a terrace that's really what you need to incorporate into your strategies is being together and getting those refrags these 1v1 duels are not what code needs right now as that's going to be die picking up another frag here trev's to last one alive 1v5 awp in hand and quite honestly i'm surprised that he's not just running at this point as 20 seconds left on the clock the bomb's down now he's going to run back but Kate Strong and Potter, they're going to be there to hit their shots as Kate will put him down and they will be able to utilize that AWP now having a double op setup. Very nicely played from uh, UB United there, just picking off shot after shot. Dime definitely starting to build up a little momentum with the op, hit a nice shot there into the palace. But yeah, you know, it, it, maybe somebody in chat can let us know. Uh, Miss Harvey might be playing 4-3, which could explain why the shot wouldn't, why she wouldn't have seen that player out of the peripherals because you have that cutoff field of view. Nonetheless, we're going to be seeing that A push here. Very aggressive on this eco. Lopez just dropped that bomb down. Remy's going to go in, get taken down as well as Trevsta. Felon dropping out of Palace gets dropped by Harvey. Wicked, the only one able to get a kill before being taken down by Harvey as well. A 2K for her on the round. Nice round there from UB United. Really shutting things down, only losing one and not letting the bomb get planted. You can't put enough emphasis on not letting the bomb get planted in the uh, anti-eco rounds. Yeah, it really is just super important there for uh, keeping the economy down for code, because, yeah, they would be sitting in a better spot probably with an AWP uh, in this round if they had that. Um, but anyhow, regardless, 3-3 three to three is the scoreline, and UB United, if they want to do well in this half, they just need to keep on racking up these, uh, racking up these rounds. Again, that sounds blatantly obvious. You need to win to win. But again, they just don't want Code to get too many rounds on that T side. If you are very good at that CT side, and again, Code picking this map, um, you only need a few rounds on T to really make a, a run for that win. So regardless, though, this is going to be an A side take as we do see Dim once again playing in the just the middle of sight. She's completely smoked off at this point, though, and that's going to be wicked. Taking down Die, peeking out of Palace. That shot, though, giving away Dim's position, and Felon will be able to utilize that advantage, dropping two, actually, in Potter. Kate Strong and Harvey now. It's going to be Miss Harvey on the flank, and that's going to be the very important player here. She's in a 1v5. Won't be able to get that spray down, and that's going to be another round for Code, as they really needed to get another one to put UB Knighted back on. They're not going to be in an eco here, but their money was getting pretty out of control with that many rounds in a row. 
Yeah, they uh, if they won that round, if UB United wins that round, they're going to be like just completely rolling in cash. Instead, they're able to buy a couple players still sitting with decent money. Potter at 3K. Potter really needed to hit that off shot on the man pushing around triple box, and that was Felon. Felon just completely annihilated her, ripping her head off. And we see an aggressive play here from them, pushing right out ramp right now, right through the smoke. Trevsa gets one, but Potter and Harvey get two. Felon and Lopez are down. Trevsa dropped to 20 HP. So this is playing out nicely here. Harvey She's getting a little terror. cheeky there, just pushing up the ladder, takes down SV. It's now Trevsa and Remy versus four. And here comes a nade taking Trevsa down to 15. Bomb just sitting out in the middle of nowhere. And Trust is just running for dear life. Remy coming in from connectors, able to take down one. That's a die drop, so the AWP is out of the hands. But great round here from UB United. Exactly what they needed here. And they're going to be able to get their AWPs back in hand. Only losing two players, taking it to 4-4 here in round number eight. So nice play there from UB United. But again, the money sitting pretty even on both sides. Code able to buy it again. Very close game for the first half, but this was Code's choice. So you never really know what to expect when that happens. Yeah, exactly. You you would imagine that they, they know they're starting on T-side. They're going to have to have some strategies uh, developed here. So right now, 4-4, four to four, that's a good scoreline for them at this point, as UB United definitely uh, could be stated as a strong CT-sided team. As we are going to see, looks like it could be another A-side take as Remy. Actually going to be peeking underpass as Trevsda will get that shot from a ramp. Miss Harvey will be on the bench for the rest of this round here, but Die will put one back in the favor of UB Knighted as Dim will get dropped, shifting to a different weapon, and Die oh, getting die. way too aggressive, attempted to get that shot in, but isn't going to work out in her favor as now Kate Strong and Potter need to retake this bomb site. I was very confused by Die there. Maybe they, maybe Die thought they were reloading and she could get in and get an easy frag, but that aggression was not necessary at all. And somehow Potter just got dinked by a Molly. I don't know if you saw that. Oh, Potter sitting by a uh, ticket street. booth got dinked by a Molly flying through the air <laughs> for one damage. Just um, crashes over her head. <laughs> yeah, Felon tossed a nade from connector and it somehow dinked her. That was bizarre. But uh, nonetheless, UB United losing that round here. And they can't afford to lose another, so they really need to win this. The rounds are definitely going back and forth in favor of Code. And I'm a little confused. Finally, we're seeing that AWP again on Potter. Potter was on fire with the AWP on Cash, but they they switched things up. So I guess the way they play Mirage is they put Die in positions that maybe is more conducive to AWP play. So uh, Die's been running the AWP, and it really hasn't been working out that well. And Potter was on fire with the AWP, so I'm glad to see that gun back in her hands this round. And we are getting underway here. We see Trevsta pushing into Palace with an op, so we might see a duel here. Potter is, <laughs> Potter's in connector, I believe, with that op as well. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Lopez is going to put down Miss Harvey from that bomb box there. Great shot from him as now posted up near. Ooh, we suspect that Dim could be there, but right when he goes to change his crosshair positioning, that's going to be Dim getting the shot. And Trevsta will get one felon with another. So 2v4 situation as now... It's going to be down to Dim, more or less, as Kate just way out of position. Well, not out of position, but just across the map. And this is going to be a save here from the CTs. Dim really needed to get a kill there. I don't know what happened, but Dim was sitting right at the the bottom of T-Ramp that she could have gotten a kill there. And just nothing came together. Um, I don't really know what happened. And you also saw, I think that was Die in Window. Dai had really good position after Remy failed to toss the nade into window. She should have been able to take down at least one in mid. Unfortunately got into a bit of a spray down duel and didn't get the recoil under control and got traded out. Yeah, and this looks like it's going to be a successful save here as just hanging out in the kitchen here is uh, the remaining UB Knighted players as they do have two M4s in hand. And moving into this next round, that is very important that they save those rifles as they are broke. And by uh, by broke, I mean broke. <laughs> they are really broke at this point. And actually, are they opting to... No, that was actually just Dim picking up a little bit more equipment. So the players that have rifles opting to get a little bit more equipment, the rest of the team are going to be not full saving. Potter with a USB. The other... Uh, <laughs> she's not plugging USBs into anything. She has a USP. And we have Dai going down early, trying to get aggressive in Palace, and Kate trying to peek out there, trying to get the refrag, but isn't going to work out in their favor as they are completely stacked on A right now, but 
fortunately for them, it could actually be an A-side take, other than, obviously, the bomb being with Felon. But the rest of the T's are actually working their way into A. This is uh, an interesting play. Uh, they do get taken down odd. quickly there. I've done that play before as a joke, what we call it, we call it smoke box. So everyone runs underneath the balcony and buys a smoke and we just smoke ourselves in. Um, <laughs> it never works. It's just fun. Yeah. But they put four people under the balcony. I, or actually, I think it was three after one got dropped in Palace. I, I, uh, I guess they were hoping that maybe Code would just get really aggressive on A. Instead, Code plays very passively, knowing what they're facing, and ultimately they were able to take the round. Oh my god, the bomb just got dropped in Palace, and boys and girls, this is why you don't let the bomb go one place all by itself. That is exactly why, because the, yeah, what you think is not going to happen, that might just happen. Murphy's Law at his best, as now Dim and Harvey, now just in Palace here, Dim needs to get these frags as Harvey will go down now in a 1v1 situation, but Felon getting that frag coming back though is Kate. And now with an AWP in hand, 1v2 situation as it does look like Remy and Felon heading back over to that B site. Yeah, you see, uh, I don't think that Kate is going to try and take this. I think, I would imagine that Kate Strong is going to keep that up and probably toss it to Potter next round. That's a, a big save. Odds yeah, are, I think it's a great idea. It's going to be a difficult retake. No armor. So the aim punch is going to just completely annihilate her if she tries to take the fight. And we do see both players sitting at 100 HP, and she is just going to sit in Palace with that AWP. Yeah, exactly. With that equipment, what they've gained already from getting those kills, getting the economy here in the AWP, honestly, this is this is great. And she shows, still has a 5.7 and a flash, so that's, again, another, like, $800 right there, right? My mask correct, $500, yeah. Um, $700, what am I talking about? Oh, my God, I've been casting for far too long. Anyhow, I can't blame my mask skills on casting. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> round number 12 here is about to conclude as Code will be picking up their eighth of this T half. And that's reaching territory where they're kind of running away with things as moving over to that CT side. Like I said, if you're pretty savvy on CT side and you know how to counter those those smoke plays that we had talked about in that first best of three, if you're, if you're really coordinated with your smokes against a CT team that's maybe a little bit shaky, you are going to run through them. But against a CT side that knows how to counter, it's really difficult to get rounds on that T side. And Code right now, they're getting rounds. I don't know if UB United's going to be able to do it on their T side. If I'm being realistic right now, I think we're going to see map three. Uh, it doesn't look like UB United is really that strong on Mirage. It's not even a matter of them just losing duels. They're playing well aim-wise. They're hitting their shots, but they just don't know. They're not playing the map the way it needs to be played. Uh, Code is executing default strategies, and they don't know what to do about it. Smokes are going to rain out CT, jungle stairs, and they just get locked out of the site. And it's working time and time again here. So they're taking the duels, but just not not able to really protect the bomb site from the, you know, the bomb just gets down and they can't do anything about it. So I think we're going to be seeing that third map, which is Nuke. So yeah, and a that knife could round. be interesting. And a knife round to decide the sides. So call, call, yeah. Talk about a toss up. Talk about a toss up as you could be in either the best or worst scenario as we do see a retake underway that's going to be die hitting a great shot as picking up from stairs taking down trev's die underneath palace gets another one on the lopez at a ramp remy last one alive and that's wow. going to be a third one that is a beautiful beautiful play from die just unreal shots there and that is that, that quite possibly could be that momentum that UB United is requiring. Another person to step up. Last map, it was Potter and Miss Harvey just hitting some crazy nuts shots. I think that if Dai can step up here, she can get her team behind him or behind her, and uh, they, they can make a run for this uh, map, just closing this out and taking it 2-0. But definitely, it's going to be difficult. They really need to get these last two rounds. Die just made me shut my mouth. I was saying earlier in the game that I was a little disappointed that they weren't putting the AWP in Potter's hand because Potter was really strong with the AWP in the previous game. And then Die shows up huge with that big 3k to retake the site there. And we're going to see, be seeing some strong aggression here from Code. K-Strong able to get the first one. That's Lopez down. It's not an ego round. They're just opting to rush B and try and catch UB United off guard. Felon and Trevs to get K-Strong and Die down early. Bomb planted very quickly here. But Potter with a with Scar 20 on Catwalk, and she's going to opt to spam that smoke a little bit before backing off 
And here, look at this boost. Boosting over the smoke onto the top of Double Box here. Unfortunately, no one is over there. Look at Dim here. Dim from Apps. This is going to be the player to watch as we do see approaching. But Dim missing some shots here and will be able to get two now in a 2v1 situation. Happens very quickly. Felon now giving away his position, but... This should be it. No, this is not enough time. Gonna try and get the spray down, but Dim is out of time. Felon will get that fra I don't know. He didn't get the frag. Regardless, we'll get the round 9 to 5 is our score line here. Um, when you're sitting at 9, when you're sitting at 8 5, and you're looking at the realistic situation of a 1v1, and the bomb is ticking away, you need to just stick that bomb defusal. Maybe trying to get a little bit. Um, I don't even know what the word would be. Hoping that that player is already in sight, waiting to peek you when you go for the defuse. But there was about seven, maybe eight seconds left on that bomb. If she held the defuse originally, she might have been able to take it. But at this point, you gotta, you just gotta go for it. It's kind of like you yeah. watch football and you see players throwing up bombs late in the game when they're down by a lot and throwing interceptions. You just have a hail to, mary. You have to force the play. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Definitely, uh, in the heat of the moment, though, didn't. Pick the right route, and uh, Code looking good here. If they can secure this 10th round on T's side, this is uh, showing why they picked this map. That is for sure, as we do see K-Strong is way pushed up. So this gives a lot of information to the CT side, and she's actually in a very opportune position. Gets one frag, peeks out, tries to get the second one, can't finish it off, but Felon down to 13 or 30 HP. We see some frags going on in mid. Travis goes down, Remy fires back. Remy actually gets two. And now it's down to die. She's in the B site. Felon, oh, this is a very, very difficult situation. She just pre -fi Oh, she saw his waist. Oh, what a play. And now very lit is Remy peeking through with the off. Oh, oh with the headshot. What? Remy gets the tap. And with 10 HP, I don't think Die had any idea with the AWP out trying to hit that shot. And that's going to be code taking that kill and the round 10 to 5 as our scoreline moving into our second half here. Wow. I thought maybe 9-6 was going to be the scoreline here. Die hit that one wall bang shot and then was in really good position. I don't know why she got so aggressive. She had the clock on her on her side, right? The bomb wasn't planted, was it? Nope. I don't remember. No, I, it, I, it like, got dropped. I, I got person so, had the bomb, actually. I got so into the round that I don't even remember if the bomb was planted. She had the <laughs> clock on her side. All she had to do was wait, and she started to do that little crab walk peek. And yep. it didn't pay off. Yep, the headshot is real, as we do see. Looks like Felon might be having a little bit of issues. Just disconnected here. But we are going to be moving into the second half here in just a moment. And the way this has been looking, we might be seeing a third map here, guys. And that's going to be, like we were saying, Nuke. And it will be decided uh, in terms of the sides that they start on via a knife round. So talk about importance on a knife round. And this is actually a discussion, considering we got a couple minutes to, to talk about things here. Knife round regulations and strategies on knife round. How much time do you actually spend as a team trying to get good strategies for a knife round? Especially for a map like Nuke. Do you even spend time on it? I, I honestly would love to have a conversation with a coach or someone on one of these top tier professional teams. Again, maybe not necessarily the ones that we're watching here. Uh, not that these guys aren't really, really good teams, but regardless, the teams in the majors and stuff, do they do they do they practice that? I, I, I really have no idea. Um I would like to think that they put some some emphasis into it. Uh, personally, I don't like the knife rounds. I would rather see what I opted for, and I suggested this to the men over at SIVO last season. One HP decoy rounds. <laughs> oh my Unlimited God. ammo, decoys in hand, and you just got to peg each other to death. It's like wow. dodgeball. Yeah, like snowball fight almost. You're it would like... be so fun <laughs> to watch because it would make it would, it would honestly make it a, a very enjoyable. Knife rounds are fun, but could you imagine like getting into it and be like, "All right, we're playing on, uh, you know, CS dodgeball here. Everyone gets a grenade, no armor, try and take each other down or everyone has 1 HP and the only way to kill each other is by tagging with a nade." As much as I'd like to see that as it would be entertaining, I honestly just want to see something that isn't so much chance because that's what knife rounds feel like right now. It feels like both teams don't, they just kind of hit head to head and whatever happens, happens. Like again, yeah, you're strategizing at least minorly trying to like say who got what hit on which player and how to do that kind of thing. But other than that, 
I don't know. It just feels so random for something that really does decide. Again, being nuke, it decides which side you start on on a map that's just like almost to the point that you can just destroy a team's morale completely on one side. And then, yeah, of course, they get to have their turn at that side eventually. But momentum is really, really a lot in this game. And I don't know if I agree with those people that say, well, you get time on one side, you get time on the other. It still is a very momentum based only in the top 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 tier is like nip quality teams do you have teams that can go down that many rounds and still have momentum and pride and confidence moving into the next half personally i i would like to see nuke removed from the competitive rotation that's just my opinion i felt I that for a long time i think it's too one-sided it, it puts too much emphasis on ct side on that map I, I kind of think it's a bit of a joke. People cry about Cobblestone and Train, yet they don't seem to care about Nuke when Nuke is the biggest defender of CT side of maps. I mean, you think about the fact that a healthy T side on Nuke is 12-3. Yeah, no doubt. No, I completely agree. And personally, I actually never play it. <laughs> if it's up to me, we would never play Nuke whenever I'm just like randomly playing the game. So anyhow, we are into this pistol round here. 5-10 to 10 is the scoreline. Round number 16, and we're going to see a lot of... We got uh, actually three kits on code. So I don't know if that's, they just don't want to worry about communication between them and finding the kit. But regardless, we're going to see the site being taken by UB Knighted already. All five players still alive and smoke grenades in very opportune positions. Tressa with a nice little flick of the wrist there, taking off K Strong's head. Miss Harvey is dropped, Dim taken down, die as well. And here comes the defuse here. Pot of the last one standing, dropped by Trevsta, who does get the 3k. And you mentioned it, the three can't buy a little bit interesting, but the truth is they knew what they were going to see. Based on what they saw from UB Knighted in the first half, they pretty much expected a set strategy from them in the pistol round, and you saw it. Smoke on stairs, smoke on jungle, smoke CT. Let them get the plant, retake and defuse. And they did it perfectly. That's why Code picked this map. They know it better than UB Knighted probably. They knew that it was going to be their best map, and ultimately they are showing it here with a score of 11-5. to 5. Yeah, no doubt. They are uh, moving into this next round here with, we got three FAMAS on the board, and that's actually going to be Lopez taking down Kate as already early on. Miss Harvey, though, getting a ridiculous shot onto Lopez, and Dim getting one as well onto Remy as Trevsta will fire back eventually, taking off the head of Miss Harvey, but 3v3 situation a little bit closer than you'd like to see it as the code players here, but... The bomb is still in T-spawn. Dim working underpass, die up in apps near B. Looks like they could be rotating back, maybe opting to work that A site. That looks like where the bomb is heading in uh, where Potter is currently moving. She does have die right behind and Dim playing a, a very kind of cheeky spot that you can catch someone off guard on cat or maybe from that ladder room. But at some point, she does peek up. Jumps up, sees a player on Cat, actually tries to make it up, gets a beautiful shot onto Trevsta, and now a 1v2 situation as Die getting the bomb down here. That's going to be a win in itself, but if she can get another frag or even two and win the round, that would be mad. Oh, oh my, my god. god. What did we just see, Wicked? Oh, oh my no god. Way. You have to replay that, please. Oh, good what Lord. just happened? Welcome to CSGO. Die, just going massive. And those one clicks, that wasn't even spammy. That was just, hi, I see your head, I'll take it, see you later. That is a round for you, Be Knighted, that Code's just going to be shaking their head about. Yeah, you know that the non-subs right now wish they could chat. And I could guarantee you the spam would just say, wrecked, 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 oh, yeah. wrecked, wrecked, over nine. and over wrecked and over nine. again. Die hitting some nutty shots with the Tech 9 in that one versus two. Oh my god. That was just madness. That, yeah, that that was insane. And now we see an equipped T side. And uh, we got Potter with a Mac 10 there. And, uh... They are going to be taking mid control. Sorry, I'm still like recovering from that as we do see Remy. He's going to jump up actually. will peek and see Dim, but take some damage in the process. Down to 21 HP here as Dim will get a frag onto Trevsta. And Dim has been hitting some shots here. Currently top fragging 16, 2, and 3. So they are able to come back into this as UB United. They might just be able to do that considering the momentum that they are carrying after winning that round. Die picking up another two frags here. Now only two CTs left, and that's going to be Wicked going down. He was able to take down Dim, but now Felon, last one alive, working towards Arch here. 
Okay, should be able to spot him out, but he's just going to be checking carefully here. Will get Ooh. spotted out, though. Great shot by Felon in a 1v3 situation. Don't tell me it's so. If we see another clutch, I might just lose my mind. Now, yeah, Dai's going to put an end to it. So, a hat trick for Dai in that round as well. So, uh, again, what I said in the last half could be coming true in that if Dai picks up, if the individual play gets to a point where they all can get behind it, UB Knighted is not out of this map at all. I don't know if you noticed, but someone disabled sub mode only just so we could see that. And sure enough, wrecked, 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 get wrecked, wrecked, get wrecked, 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 wrecked. Vac, <laughs> vacuuming. <laughs> Dai go oh, on I see the right now in the second half. Oh, uh, that's funny. That was great. Whoever did that, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, man. Moving into round number 19 here. So we do see Trevsta. He's going to be forcing up and picking up that uh, scout. As we do see armor on Lopez and Remy as well. And I'm a little confused why Remy picked up a helmet, to be honest, as we do see AKs across the board. Obviously, he doesn't know that per se, and maybe he suspects that they have rifles that they're suspecting they're on an anti-eco so they're not going to fully buy up but regardless it's a little bit of money that uh didn't necessarily need to be spent but, yeah uh, but you know he's still sitting at 3900 he's the richest player on cd side so he had money to blow that's I a good mean, point you know the difference in money is kind of like eh, he's, he's still got the most money so it's not really that big of a deal he was evening and out evening out their economy even more so if he picks up a gun then it gets into a matter of wow Trevsa with the shot on Potter creeping up Cat. And Trevsa almost takes down his teammate Lopez, who's down to 1 HP. But if he is able to pick up a gun and then he has full armor and a gun, that's pretty big. Yeah, no doubt, as we are going to see Miss Harvey getting a nice shot onto Felon as he tries to push up across Cat there. And Trevsa from that box, that's who Miss Harvey was trying to take down. But Remy from the window will be able to get that frag. And now in a 3v4 situation. Looks like Code doing pretty decent on this round, and now in a 2v1 with Remy. Oh my god, did you call this or fuck it? Or what? Oh my god, I just swore. <laughs> 1v2, Dim. Last one alive, Remy to get the quad kill. Peeks out, Dim gets the wow. flag though. Are you kidding me? What wow. a god. What a god. What a play there, and excuse my language. <laughs> This game is so nutty that Sprawl can't even contain his violent tongue. Don't worry, we'll all pray for uh, we'll pray for Sprawl at the end of this game. Please do, Lord Gaben, please, please forgive do. Sprawl. He knows not what he does. Oh man, what a round! Potter getting a nice frag there from a ramp, and that's going to be opening up this round number 20 here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm just going to be riding this high because these matches have been insane. Now the bomb working towards, again, near a ramp. K-Strong pushed up in Palace, right outside of Palace. That's going to be Lopez kind of playing a cheeky position here as... Very common to try and counter this as K-Strong will be able to get that headshot flick though and that's going to be exactly the entry that they need to head into this A site. Now smoking things off so players from Connector, Felon, we are seeing him peeking from stairs, almost takes down K-Strong, down to 4 HP there. Harvey will put that bomb down, that nade sails into perfect position and another frag coming in for Potter, last player alive in Wicked and Miss Harvey tearing off his head as well, 11 to 9. Are we going to see a comeback from UB United and them closing this off in two maps? That would be very impressive and definitely what they probably want. I don't think either of these teams really want to play Nuke because, like we said, it's such a one-sided map that whoever wins Knife, it's like, well, we just lost because of the stupid one-sided nature of Nuke. Um, so I don't think either of these teams are really excited about playing Nuke. I would give the nod maybe to Ubinited as they are a team more so than maybe Code is. Uh, I'm pretty sure Code has more of a pug style to them. And we do see Dim starting his out nicely here with a kill onto Wicked. And it is a save round here. And look at the push here. Miss Harvey sitting in T-spawns, able to get the first one, trying to find the tap kills onto Trev, oh, and not able to get goodness. it. Trev with the P250 just completely annihilating Miss Harvey's face. So she's going to need a good plastic surgeon to recover from that <laughs> damage. Oh, Over here, missing the off shot onto Trevso. Oh, God, uh, that's another that kill back. for him. Okay, and simultaneously, UB United ends the round in their favor, but that was getting a little bit close as that was an eco from Code, but 
And it is going to be 10 to 11 here as UB United coming back on the T side. And gosh darn, do I feel bad saying that uh, I thought Code was just going to kind of roll through the CT side. UB United has just been working one clutch after another, just making the plays happen. And uh, with that kind of play style, honestly, the sky's the limit. If you can utilize that momentum and not be down in the down situations, you really are. Uh, th that's the mentality that you like as a, as a well-versed CSGO team. But we do see an A-side play here could be the case as, once again, Kate is lining up her smoke and or flash grenade here in Palace. And uh, Dai's going to be working over. She's that Lurk player as hoping to catch someone on the rotate, making sure that they don't push up too much. And again, that's going to be the entry from Kate as Trevsta will be able to fire back here. And that was the frag that he wasn't able to get previously. Miss Harvey gets Remy trying to make it through the smoke, gets Ooh. a second one in Trevsta. And now a 2v4 situation. And that double op buy just completely destroyed Code's economy. Picking up two ops basically out of desperation, I would think. They want to try and shut down UB United's momentum. And instead, they bankrupt themselves, and it's now a two versus four, both ops down. It's really hard to hold an aggressive push, and that's exactly what happened. Miss Harvey just, like, went ham, pushing through that smoke, and just completely caught that opera off guard, couldn't hit the first shot. And once you miss the first one, it's pretty much game over. We do see Wicked here in ladder. Gonna try and clean up Die. Does not get the kill. Taking her down to 6 HP. Fell on the last man standing in apartments. Gonna go for a snack from that refrigerator, and Potter's gonna say, You've had enough. <laughs> Takes him down with that AWP. <laughs> So that is you a have tie had enough. score. I did not 11, anticipate a tie score. I really didn't. I thought that code was going to take this. I thought we were definitely seeing map three. Now, maybe not so much. Yeah, I don't know. It, it's going to be another... This is going to be a weapon round here for, for code. Um, but you be knighted, I feel... That, yeah, they have got to feel confident. You, you've gotten how many in a row here? Let me double check. We've gotten... Pistol round was for code. That was it. That was it. So six rounds in a row on the T side. They are looking great right now. Is UB knighted? And again, if they can continue this momentum, that is going to be worth its weight in gold. As we do see, this it does look it's like it's going to be maybe an A side fake as the bomb is positioned with K strong. Remy's actually really pushed up on A ramp. So this could be an opportune place for him to play if. They do not check this area, but Dim is going to come down to the way she peeks. This does peek out. Remy gets Ooh. both, and Lopez gets one. That's enough to pull the seat. Oh, my God. Oh they're still God. rotating. They're still they rotating. Need to get in there so they need to get in there so quick, though. Wicked. Only one on site. Two players dropping down. Die will go down immediately. Kate now knows the situation, but will get dropped Nicely as well. Played. Flawless round from Code, and UB United not out of this yet. Code taking that round, and now... Maybe even the momentum with it. Lots of money on the UB United side as they, again, you're not going to not have money after winning six rounds in a row, no matter how close they are. And on the T side, a little bit more inexpensive to buy. So they are going to be fully equipped here, actually, with all smokes, Molotovs on four of them as well. So that's going to be a great setup as this is going to be up to code to stuff it once again. We'll find out if they can do so. Remy pushed up at A ramp again. If Remy got taken down, that changes that round entirely because then Remy's in a position where he has no information. He can't tell them whether or not the bomb's there. And we do see him drop early to some aggression that? on ramp. I guess they thought they'd be facing an eco. I don't know what the idea was. Maybe catch them off guard. But that's going to put them at a man disadvantage early in the round. And look at Lopez pushing his own smoke onto ramp into the same spot. And I can't imagine that UB United is going to let them do this again. They're going to peak this spot this time. They did last time. They just didn't take the duel. So Lopez, he'll be lucky if he escapes with a kill here. Even more so if he gets his life. And here we see them coming around oh, the corner. Potter Potter's doesn't peak. peak, but the wide peak by Potter ends up saving the day as Dim is able to trade out Lopez. It's now a four versus two as Otrevsta is dropped. By Miss Harvey. Miss Harvey now a 2k entering the site. Last man standing was wicked and dim. Jumps through takes the him smoke. down. And another tie score game. Superman here. style. <laughs> I don't know what he was thinking there. I mean, at that point in the round, you know what's gonna happen. Maybe he's trying to stop the bomb plant, buy some time. Comes in like Kool-Aid uh, man. Oh yeah. Maybe get a phone Buster number from one of these girls on United. <laughs> I don't I don't really know. <laughs> we should frag together later. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> I don't even know what that pickup line would be. Anyhow, regardless, 12 to 12, we are back on 
an even score line here and this is definitely going to affect code a little bit worse than it does with UB United as we do see the money situation plenty of money on UB United even if they drop this round they're sitting with good money code not quite the same situation and uh, they have Remy posted up very close a ramp once again if he even gets one frag I'm gonna be frustrated with UB United because <laughs> he's gonna peek through oh and he doesn't finish the spray on the dip Oh my goodness, he flashes himself through. It was beautiful. The spray, not so much. Do you see Felon? Felon pushing into T spawn, oh coming from behind. They are not going to see us. Now he does have an M4, not an M4A1, oh so he's going to get one, but I don't think he's going to get more than that. And oh. Miss Harvey completely caught off guard. He's going to get the first kill. Oh my god, he gets two. Is he going to get three? Yep. Jesus, what just happened? Yeah, that's uh, what you call a flank right there as. <laughs> That's going to be code looking hot here. 2v4 situation now, and we'll see if Dai's going to be peeking up from Connector. I don't think they suspect this to be the case, and actually that's going to be a frag in their favor. Can't you get another one? Oh she my does. Goodness. Kate now in a 1v2 situation. Knows one player's jungle. The bomb is down near a ramp, and trying to get that spray. That's going to be Wicked putting a little bit of damage there. Peeking around the corner. Catch it. She Ooh. does get Lopez now in a 1v1. This is just insane, but only 15 seconds here. She's going to have to sprint right back into sight. 12 seconds on the clock, now moving up from A ramp. Might be able to spot Wicked up on the stairs, but isn't going to check mm. it. And that's going to be the round there for Code as they move up 13 to 12. Yeah, unfortunately, the uh, the the flank there, I, I, I guess the way the flash came in, Code must have just played that really nicely. They threw that flash down ramp. And then Fallon was able to just sneak up from behind and just completely annihilate them without them knowing where he was. So we mentioned, I mentioned that he had an M4 versus an, uh, an M4A1. Didn't really play into it at all. In fact, the M4 helped him because he had the bigger clip. We are going to see the bomb heading over to this B site here. Is actually Remy once again pushing a ramp and getting a frag there. So aggressive every single time. And, uh, well, maybe not every single time, but definitely playing aggressive to pull back and hold a passive angle as we do see Wicked and Felon getting two frags, but Dai picking up two of her own now in a 2v3 situation. She's pushed into B site all alone, and that's going to be a little unfortunate for her as Remy does make his way into site. Lopez taking out Potter at top mid and Dai going down in the B site. Code looking to close out this map as they're one point away, one round away from match point here. Watching uh, CSGO with X-Ray on is kind of like, I, I used to have this nightmare when I was younger that I was swimming in a pool and I go to swim to the top and I'm running out of breath and I'm an inch from the surface of the water and I can't get up. I can't get over, I, I'm just staring at the water above me and that's kind of like what it's like playing with X-Ray on. You watch players peeking corners and they're <laughs> so close to seeing each other and they just don't. Then they look away. <laughs> it's like the last second you're like, you got to be kidding me. It's like watching a horror movie when they decide to split up. It just, it's so frustrating <laughs> like, to watch. Like, don't do it! Yeah, no doubt, as we do see an A-side push here, and that's going to be Trevsta getting two dim. Managed to get one, but a triple here, as now Wicked firing as well. And Die in a 1v3 now, gets one frag onto Felon, tries to get that spam, and actually almost does so close around that corner. 11 HP on Lopez, and this is going to be Die 25 HP. A galil and a dream, trying to prevent this from going to match point. That grenade's gonna sail in, not doing a heck of a lot of damage. Pizza gets one frag, but gets traded on immediately. And that is gonna be the round here. Code pushing this to 12 to 15. Match point here. UB United, they're gonna have to go for overtime if they want to take this in two maps. Yeah, so we uh, started getting ahead of ourselves a little bit too much. UB United looking pretty strong for a little while, but they kind of got figured out here. Code, I guess you could say, found the counter, and it's basically just pushing ramp. <laughs> they put a player on ramp like three or four rounds in a row and got a double kill almost every time. And here we see Trev said the 2K right off oh, the bat, wow. taking down Harvey and Potter. And that looks like it's pretty much going to be a GG for this map. Dim and mid getting into a duel with Lopez. Wicked and Fallon dropping the last two. Die and Kate Strong there dropped as well. So 16-12 in favor of Code. So we're going to be seeing map number three here, which is Nuke. And I'm not too thrilled about it because we talked about it already. Very CT sided. Nonetheless, Sprawl and I are going to take a quick break. We will be right back with map number three, which is Nuke, which will get decided for sides with a knife round. So stay tuned, ladies and gentlemen. We will be right back. Whatever 
All right, guys, we are back. This is the third and final map of the evening. This is our first night of broadcasting for the RGN New Year's Open, and I don't think it could have been any more exciting, to be honest with you. This has been two crazy matches. We are about to go into our third map here, and this knife battle right now that UB Knighted is taking so far, they are looking good as... They win this knife round. They're starting CT Nuke, and gosh darn, would that feel good for either team? As again, I am Sprawl. By my side is the one and only Bach, and we're going into a UB, UB United CT sided Nuke map three. Yeah, and uh, we talked about it in the last map. Uh, I'm not really sure how either of these team teams play Nuke, but I would give the nod to UB United as they've been playing together for longer. You see, I'm pretty sure this code lineup is kind of a, a mix. I don't think they're necessarily a set roster. I could be wrong in that, but uh, I, I'm going to have to give the, the nod to UB United. Even if they started T-side, I feel like they might be able to pull this out just because they probably have a little bit more experience playing together on Nuke. That said, Nuke is kind of a, a crapshoot. You never really know what you're going to get. Sometimes you have this team that just comes out and plays you know, crazy T-side, and that's all there is to it. And then other times you have teams go 14-1 and come back and take it to overtime. I remember watching Wusa play against uh, Anonymous 5. I don't remember what it was for, but it went 14-1. Uh, Anonymous 5 starting CT side, and then Wusa came back and tied it. So that's just a uh, testament to the nature of Nuke and how one-sided this map really is. So please, Valve, either fix the map or take it out of the rotation because I personally don't really care for it. I know that you and I had already talked about this. I think the map needs some uh, pretty big changes. Nonetheless, we are going to be getting into the pistol round here on Nuke. And we do have Yumi United starting on the CT side. It's been an impressive night of matches so far for the first set of matches in the RGN New Year's Open. So very exciting tournament we have going thus far. And with me is Sprawl for the third and final map here. I am pretty pumped and also very tired as it is 2 a.m. my time, but I am sticking to it because I'm just running with that adrenaline rush from watching the last two matches. Yeah, no doubt. We're going to be live here in pistol round. And luckily for me, it's only just after 11 p.m. So, guys, I am still going strong over here. Well, maybe not that strong, but I'm still I'm still, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right. So I'm hyped for this third map, and we're going to see an outer take here already as it's going to be Lopez leading that charge, heading on down. And actually, that was Remy getting a frag onto the aggressive Miss Harvey. Now Lopez pushing down into lower. Potter will get one frag before being traded upon. And so far, this is looking like a round for the T's, but Dim, look, looking to change that as we'll get the one tap onto Wicked, now kind of stuck in transition as Rami's going to take down Dim, and now 2v3. Both CT players are in the lower site, and the bomb has been planted upper. Yeah, that was a um, very interesting play for Miss Harvey there, taking herself out of the equation early in the round, pushing straight into lobby and up ladder onto roof. Could have really worked out. Unfortunately, the T's had a player sitting in lobby on that little catwalk area. And K Strong, the last one left standing for UB United, is going to get dropped by Trepsta and Felon. 3K for Remy there. He did get that lead kill on Miss Harvey, which was a big one. If Miss Harvey could have gotten around them outside, that would have been devastating. Instead, Code gets the very important pistol round here on Nuke. And uh, if they can chain together three rounds, that could be the only three rounds they get depending on how well UB United plays CT side on Nuke. And that actually puts you in a really stressful position as the CTs on this map. If they go up three, again, obviously you want to, from the get-go, get all the rounds, but you just know that you have zero room for mistakes. And that can also, that can almost put you into these positions where you're making mistakes purely because you're overthinking specific techniques that quite honestly you should just be following through on the way you practice so we'll see if that has any effect here as UB United has fully bought five sevens in armor which is quite honestly not a bad idea uh being that it's 
CT on nuke. It's quite possible for you to take this round, but if they drop this in a way that code loses no members or something crazy like that they could be in a very very bad economic situation and uh, we do have one minute left on the clock outside is being taken die will get a little bit of damage done as remy will be able to or rather miss harvey will be able to put down remy lopez fires back but die will get the frag trades back and forth now with three versus three 40 seconds on the clock wicked down to 50 hp and uh they look like they're heading towards that a site we do see a rifle in the hands of Die, getting that kill outside. The the five seven is just so strong, and we see Potter in heaven, not able to get the kill on Lopez there, not able to drop the bomb either. Die with the AK in mini. Wow, nice shot from her and K Strong getting Lopez as well. It's now a two v one, now a one v one. Die and Wicked, and oh, Die wow. gets the kill, a three K on the round. That is like the third or fourth time we've seen Die do that. So definitely uh, showing off a little bit here in round number two, and that is a round that Code could not lose. They they just can't lose that round. They have to win three in a row here uh, because of this being nuke. If I was Ricky Rath right now, I would be talking about how the 5.7 is just straight baller. Hot <laughs> weapon, best pistol in the game. Again, as quoted by Ricky Rath himself, chilling out in the chat here. Um, but yeah, great round there for UB Knighted. They picked up that second and code. They really needed the free three. They needed those anti ecos. And of course, UB Knighted, they purchased, they had full armor and five sevens on all their players and they played it perfectly. They, they worked all the fright. It came down to a one V one at the end, but die hit her shot. And, uh, that's going to put the momentum in the favor of UB Knighted, but Remy looking to change that is he's going to utilize that Tech 9. Potter going down early now, and uh, we're going to see Remy and actually in a great position taking down Dim as well. This is just a round that's spiraling down into oblivion, but Miss Harvey trying to pick it back up as she's going to get a couple frags here. K Strong now alone inside a ramp room. She's got Felon right above, and she's now in a 1v3 situation. They're going to be taking this bomb upper, and She's got no kit. Yeah, and you're hearing it over voice comms. UB United is saying, how are we losing this round? They took duels and just... It's like they didn't even shoot. They just peeked and got shot in the head and fell back before they'd even taken a shot. Uh, code peeking all the right corners with those P250s, and that gun is just scary accurate. Not necessarily getting the kill right away, but getting dropped to 10 HP when you have a rifle versus a pistol, you're going to play very passively, and that's what happened. And unfortunately, Code just got right into the bomb site because of it, and we're going to see the eco trade here, as now UB United is going to be so broke. And Code, because they got plants in both rounds, they're actually sitting really good money-wise. And you see K-Strong, the only player left standing, going to get dropped after the bomb blows up. And, uh... Yikes. Yikes indeed. That is uh, going from such a... I... <laughs> This is not the way I thought Nuke was going to start off. Let's just say that, first and foremost. T-Side winning the pistol, which again, that's probably the most most kind of even playing field for T's and CT's on this map, that first round. And that's why it is so important for them to get that. When they drop that second round, though, their hearts must have sunk. But some fire inside kept burning because they came back and won that third round and now they're in great shape as what is what this? is going are on are you kidding me right what now what are we watching now this is they not drop the bomb they have weapons the two t's are inside of a site without the bomb they're grouped up in hut and they are going to get a beautiful flank so lopez will be able to drop miss harvey this isn't over quite yet here as smoke grenade will go down towards radio and die She's very, very low, has Kate Strong on her side though, and peeking out, will, no, won't take out Lopez, and Lopez getting the frag that he desperately needed, Potter with an AWP though, 1v1, Wicked versus Potter, bomb down, 45 seconds, she gets the wow. shot, what a play, Potter what gets that AWP this? frag. Did someone install COD in place of CS? <laughs> What? I don't understand. Holy jeebus. But th the thing is, if, if Code can continue to trade like this, like, 
they're, they're in great shape. If you can trade any rounds as T on Nuke, you're just going to be in a great position. So they, although losing that round, they're going to be choked about it. Sitting 2-2 two, two at this point, they're not too, too worried. So if they're coming into this round right now with the attitude that they came in winning that third, they might be able to make this. They're coming into A right now, and they do get one frag. Miss Harvey will be able to return, though, and get two. And that's very important as they do try and take control of this site now dropping down to lower are both of the t's and they're gonna get a potter and an awp out of it can they take advantage of this wow. 2 hp and 5 hp on these t players lopez taking down miss harvey i'm out of things to say i don't think i've seen egos go this well on nuke in forever I think I it's know. like Genesis 1-1 in the Bible says, thou shalt not <laughs> eco on nukes sexfully. <laughs> what? I mean, I know they're down to 8 HP combined, but this is already a win for an eco on nuke. They've taken three guns out of the hands of the CTs. Miss Harvey, the only one finding kills. I just, I'm so confused by what's happening right now. They're, they're going to drop the bomb, but Felon's going to wrap here, get into heaven with an AWP. If he hits the first shot, it's all down to that duel. Who's going to get the shot? And oh, K-Strong holding that strong, very wise play. But still, that round really did not go the way it should have gone. You saw Potter pre-firing that door like crazy, but the smoke just blocking her off. And then she almost TK'd a teammate like twice, trying to shoot through the smoke. But, uh... Oh my lord. Yeah, I don't know this what's happening just here. Absolutely they should just all meet outside and knife each other and just call it a day. <laughs> Something like that. This is just madness. As Moving into round number six here, we are going to see both teams with full weapons. So uh, we'll see what happens in a round like this as... Like we've been saying, those Ecos have been going back and forth, and some of them have been Ecos, some have been armor by, kind of pistol by, still kind of economic rounds in that you just couldn't buy a rifle. Um, but moving into this round number six, it's three to two, and UB United really needs to start stacking some rounds here. They can't afford to let these rounds keep being traded back and forth. So that last one was really close. Now they've actually flashed themselves out here. Remy already making it down into the vents. I'm not sure if Potter quite caught that. And Dim will be able to finish up that kill. So good heads up play by Dim. We'll be able to take down Remy. Peaks back up. We'll will be able to get, take that frag onto Wicked as well. Down to 12 HP, but two frags here looking good. Lopez though. Lopez. He's going to take down Die and Ramp Room. Now two terrorists left for CTs. Right on the bottom of this ramp is K-Strong just waiting, holding that angle, and Lopez will not check that spot. As now it's going to be all down to Felon. He will check this spot. And actually, no. For a split second, I think he saw Potter, but it could have been me just sketching out on my X-ray here. As I could see Potter, and we do oh see my God. Har Miss Harvey. Miss Harvey. That should have been a oh frag, and Felon getting two, making it a 1v2 with Dim down to 12 HP. Five seconds. No time to plant. Does he get should it? Get, you should be able to get with three. Oh, yeah, my goodness. Good to go. Good to go. 1v2 Dim coming from that Vents position. This incinerary should be able to stop K-Strong momentarily. If Felon can take down Dim and make this a 1v1, Dim's going to get aggressive here. and Just be out dead. Oh, my God. 1v1 situation. K-Strong is full HP. This is insane as Felon now it jumps back into the fire. What are you oh doing? Oh my god. What? What are we watching? What? What are we watching? Is this even Counter Strike? This, I, I feel like these teams decided they were just had enough. And they're just like, let's just see what happens if we just pretend that we're not actually playing competitive Counter Strike. That, I. Uh, I, I don't want to diss any of these teams. Oh my goodness. I think I lost you, Bach. It was too much. It, it, it's almost as if you like walked into a match on like Facade last season. Like a map that no one knows. I just yeah. don't understand this. This is madness. This, this is, is Sparta. Madness. Yes, it is. This is 300 and the T-side and Coke. They're trying to get some rounds on the board here and actually they are gonna be able to push outside. Potter, oh my goodness, gets the 360. <laughs> Had no idea where Felon was and Lopez will be able to finish that frag, but 
It's going to be a 2v4 situation. I'd like to say this should be an easy cleanup for UB Knighted, but they've proved me wrong previously. Just peeking one by one, and... Lopez will go down, and Trevsta should follow suit momentarily, but P250 in hand has the bomb, 31 HP. I'm just still speechless. Absolutely speechless as to what we've seen so far in these matches, as Dai will be able to pick that, pick up that pistol headshot. Trevsta going down, and another one in the books for UB Knighted, as they are starting to stack a couple rounds, but these rounds have been expensive. Yeah, UB Knighted really, really, really needs to set the base here. Uh, I could add probably like five or six more reallys in there, and that still wouldn't get the, the point across. Every round has come down to a situation that was way too close. That was the only time I've seen a round where there was a pretty one-sided advantage to one team, and that one was the CT side, which is what you expect on Nuke. Uh, you know, but even still, like, Ecos have not been going their way, and you see Code starting things out with a headshot onto Potter, dropping the AWP outside. That's going to open up a lot here. And you, Dim does spot one out, Squeak, but not able to get the kill. Miss Harvey does respond onto that initial kill, taking down Trevista, making it a four versus four. But this has been one ridiculous match. I don't think I've ever seen a match of Nuke played quite the way that this is being played out. I think we need a montage of speechless moments from just this cast. Like, and there's plenty. There's plenty. As we are going to see Remy taking down Dim. Dropping from Mini. Now in a very awkward spot. 4v3 here. Miss Harvey die and K-Strong still left alive. As K-Strong holding from ramp. Dying down near Secret. And Miss Harvey inside of a site playing very slow as code and this is exactly the kind of position they want to be put in as they're just kind of working one pick one by one potter went down very early outside but k-strong will be able to return fire taking no damage to note as well so that's very important that it's not lit up in this ramp room as remy is going to come around the corner will go down and that's going to be a cleanup here for ub knighted and a six round on the board for them i feel like i'm gonna have a heart attack every single round Cause like I'm watching it and I'm thinking, oh, UB United, they're gonna, they're, this is their chance. They're gonna start, they're just gonna start chaining rounds together, and then out of nowhere, Code's like, hey, all I need is a P250 and I'll kill you from halfway across the map, and it comes down to a 2v2. Uh, it, in that round, even they all had guns, and Dim saw the shadow of the man on mini roof, and still he got the kill. I'm just, uh, I, I don't know if maybe these tired, the players are just getting tired or. Maybe they're frustrated or, or what's going on. UB United is up 6-2, but it's not a, a really pretty game so far. Every round has been pretty close, maybe outside of one or two rounds. So I am just blown away. Yeah, no, it's been five in a row right now. Five rounds in a row, and Miss Harvey's got 6,800. She's the top, 5,800 on die. So definitely they should have a lot more money than this. And we do see die actually working the flank, trying to jump around in lobby as Wicked's trying to spray her down. And you're going to see Wicked taking down K-Strong 2v3 now as the bomb is still out near T-Red on Felon. But wrapping around is going to be Wicked. And they still have plenty of time to deal with as Potter will go down a beautiful headshot there. And again, those kills that you can get without receiving any damage are just oh so important in these situations where you're not in the advantage. So if you're down a person, and this is going to be a free before Wicked comes around the corner. Dim had no idea what just happened. And Miss Harvey in a 1v2 has her work cut out for her. Yeah, and unfortunately, you heard it in-game. Miss Harvey was playing a cat-and-mouse game with that player who was pushing around towards hell. And they, the call-out was made, but I just don't think that that player heard it. And uh, I really thought that that would have gone... That she would have let Dim know and Dim would have turned, but Dim just gets completely blindsided, maybe getting into a little bit of a game with that man outside. Still, though, Miss Harvey getting the 2K at the end to clutch it. And again, it comes down to another... Close ground. 1v2. UB United somehow squeaks out the victory here. But my goodness. I, I just can't stop thinking about how bizarre this is. I, I've never seen a nuke game play out to a 7-2 scoreline with this many close rounds. Yeah, it's been... Uh, and that's the thing. Quite honestly, I'd rather it be this way because usually it's just like, okay, so they're trying upper once again and they get mowed down. Or they try outside once again, they get mowed down. The only T side rounds they, they can usually pick up is just kind of they work a situation where they can get a trade and then kind of open up on a mistake from the CT side. But we do see Wicked getting an early frag here onto Har Miss Harvey. Potter will be able to fire back, though. And uh, How did they get inside so quickly? I don't think anybody was playing upper. 
Oh, man. They just left upper wide open there. Miss Harvey and Potter both playing outside. Miss Harvey, usually that person playing inside of sight. Now in a 4v3 situation, two players lit and die and dim. This is looking a little bit... Uh, in the favor of code and by a little bit i mean a lot as we do see dim take down one so now in a 3v3 pushing through the smoke we are going to see potter getting another frag but getting dropped is dim and no time Whoa. left on the clock this is going to be potter she got the frag tries to live felon will be able to get the frag goes down to the bomb but that is the third round for code and honestly any rounds here that they can get they're going to be feeling great about it and listening to the voice comms again in the server, I can hear frustration from both sides. You know, UB United is up 7-3. So Code is frustrated that they're taking so many close rounds and losing them. And UB United is frustrated that they're they're having to win so many close rounds. So both sides are just like feeling that nuke frustration. The nuke struggle is very real. And uh, I have a feeling that's why maybe you saw Miss Harvey playing outside that round. Maybe feeling like she needs to put this in her hands. Uh, she's been, you know, a big player thus far. Top fragging right now, but her performance on the scoreboard doesn't really show what she's been doing. As she is only one frag ahead of die. I think you're no, I think you're on the money on that because Potter had been playing outside and she honestly Lopez was one tapping her quite a few times there. So we are gonna see Remy taking down Dim. Miss Harvey though will get two frags of her own, and that is exactly what they needed to make this round in their favor as if uh, no refrag was done there, definitely a good spot for Code to be in, as they do have the bomb lurking out near T-Red. And uh, Wicked still playing inside of Lobby. I do like that they're going to be rotating back Felon, heading back to Rendezvous with Wicked, as Trevsta isn't far behind. So I imagine with 40 seconds on the clock, they might opt to go ramp, but... If they can get this pick early on, they might go for it. K-Strong is here. FAMAS in hand, so not maybe the most optimal weapon for this position to play. We'll see a nade rain on in, and we'll be calling to her teammates, but is she going to be able to get the spray down as they are going to be coming into the ramp room? Does get one, but Felling gets two, and now we're into an even man and female count. This, uh, it's funny, if this had played out the way you would expect, we'd be seeing this scoreline right now. And you're going to see that plant in the smoke, and Potter's not able to find that man in the smoke. That's Fallon. Doesn't matter. Die is there to trade him out. Potter did hit the man at the top of ramp. But, uh, if we had, if this had played out the way it probably should have, Code would be sitting at three rounds, and UB United would be at a high round score. So, even though it's been a very bizarre game of nuke, the scoreline still reflects, reflects what you would expect to see on Nuke. Um, I, I, I'm really struggling to find words. I really am. This does not happen often. No. No, it doesn't. <laughs> this, is, uh, this has been a crazy match so far, and we are continuing on here. Round number 12. As we do see P250s across the board for the T lineup. They got a couple smoke grenades. They got some nades. I imagine they're just going to be busting through. Yep, that's going to be the squeaky take as they're going to be nading that through. Smoking as well. Miss Harvey gets the first frag onto Lopez as they're actually dropping it a lower here. As it is going to be Trevsta going down with the bomb. And that is still right outside of squeaky. So this is kind of one of those rounds that, yeah, the plan was there. It didn't really work out in their favor. Other than Felon was able to drop die with a... A nice headshot, but other than that, that's going to be UB United cleaning up and once again trying to regain their bank as they are up nine to three. But again, they are very they're on the verge. If Co Code can get another round in here, UB United's going to be in a very bad, very very bad economic situation. Yeah, dies at a thousand, K strong at fifteen fifty. Not really ideal, but uh, they have managed to win nine rounds, I guess. Um, it's been uh, it's been just uh, just one of those games where you can see just how one side a nuke is. So neither team is really outplaying the other team. They're both just sort of outplaying themselves. They end up in situations that they probably shouldn't end up in, trying to outthink themselves, and they end up losing those those rounds. We do see Miss Harvey dropped early. That's a huge loss as she is top fragging right now at sixteen and nine. Die pushed up very yeah. Look at this positioning. This is going to be massive. Not, oh, she does Gets get the one. kill. I thought she was going to get taken down there. Remy does trade her out and takes down K-Strong now, making it a four versus two, and the push on ramp is on. They're going to drop down lower and get that bomb plant. And Dim's going to go secret. Potter's going to drop down vents. And they're going to have to utilize very good teamwork here. Potter trying to get the spray down and puts almost next to no damage onto that player as they are going to be able to get the bomb down here, but 
This is a very, very difficult retake as opening up the door of Dim can get the bomb planner, but doesn't. That flashbang in the worst possible time. Potter is able to get Remy, but drop wow. down as Trev's done the vents, and that's going to be code picking up their fourth round. And quite honestly, that could be all she, or all, I was going to say all she wrote, but that's not quite the, <laughs> the phrase I was going for. That could be all they need is uh, is code here having four rounds on that t side especially with the money monetary situation on ub united side they have two pistols going to this round if they lose another one this could be a nine six half and gosh darn do you that is just like worst case scenario as a ct on nuke ub united really needs to win this they they need to get the 10 round advantage 10 4 if they can get if they can get 10 5 that's at least okay it's not great but it's okay and you're going to see them line up the shots here miss harvey dim potter and another one for Harvey. It's all down to Wicked right now. Uh, so far, it's been a clean sweep for UB United. But a great play from UB United. It looks like they stacked the upper bomb site. actually. I don't think they put anyone on ramp. Yeah, I think the, they were anticipating that. I wish I could know for certain. Actually, thank Canadia Internet for how delayed my stream is. <laughs> I'm actually watching the 14th round just start on my stream. Is that awesome? Anyhow, we'll see rough. here in just a moment. I'll let you carry out. <laughs> I know, right? So Wicked here, he's probably just going to try and pick off a couple players. He knows that UB Knighted is broke. So if he can take a couple guns out of their hands, that'd be huge, especially because they came into their surround with pistols in the hands of K-Strong and Dai, both of them getting an AK and uh, it looks like some nades as well. K-Strong with the molly, flash, smoke, and grenade, full nades for her. Die with just a smoke, but a defuse kit. If they could take down at least one or two players, that'd be big. But he is just running out of time here. Uh, he's got 25 seconds left on the round, and he's just going to save. Looks like he's just going to maybe try and get some exit kills. And UB Knighted wise not to play the hunting game with Wicked. They know they can't afford to lose yet another rifle. Yeah, exactly. And the position that they're in, in that if they win this round, I don't think it's... Yeah... <laughs> It would be nice to take this AK away, but honestly, not in the event that they lose anybody would it be worth it. Um, so yeah, they're just going to let him sit tight there. And I do believe, again, I have like a mini version of the stream up on my right screen. I do believe it was three upper and maybe two pushed through ramp really, really quickly. Or it was four upper and one pushed through ramp really quickly. I believe that that was the setup. Um, but regardless, I, I'm looking at, yeah, pretty, pretty small screen there. So <laughs> don't quote me on that, guys, as we are moving into the last round of the half and getting one more round on t is just huge so we're gonna see code obviously pulling all the stops right here they have trevst out with an awp in hand two galils an ak-47 tech nine on felon trevst already going down to die and that is going to be huge as miss harvey getting a frag as well 5e3 situation and they can make this 11 to 4 they're still going to be a little bit worried. Don't get me wrong, but that's at least, again, that's the best situation they could be in at this point. At this point, I don't even think that either of these teams is really playing the map well. Um, I think that UB United is winning the aim duels, but Code is maybe outplaying UB United at least on a strategic level a little bit better. There's just so many fails on both sides where they just misplay horribly. UB United is playing CT side super aggressive. They've been doing it the whole time. It seems like it's been paying off at least a little bit, but the first couple of rounds that they lost were because they had players pushing positions they shouldn't play and gave up other spots by not playing them at all. Like that round outside where Miss Harvey pushed outside, got taken down early, and ultimately gave up the inner site. Still, though, 11-4, I'm shocked to see that scoreline based on the game I just watched. Yeah, I think UB Knight is going to feel really lucky getting out of that half with 11. And uh, if they can turn that kind of fortune and what they're kind of mentally thinking about the map, they've got to know that they're fortunate there. They really do need to utilize that advantage that they got in even just 11 rounds there. And we'll see what happens. Again, every caster is going to say the pistol round oh so important. And uh, T-Side Nuke. Every other map aside, pissed around on this map is just so freaking important, so important that, again, if you can get those first three rounds, and we even saw Code, they got that first round and dropped the second, that really was, we could be seeing a, a much crazier half here if they got that second round. Yeah, I, I, 
It's really going to boil down to Pistol here. UB United needs to take Pistol and chain those rounds together. If they chain three, that's 14-4 in favor of them. Then it's just a matter of when are they going to take the remaining two rounds. Because you could easily see a comeback from Code because it's Nuke. If Code can get, like, you know, Code could easily get 10 rounds in a row without a problem. But UB United could ultimately polish off a round or two in between. It's, it's, it's the nature of Nuke. You're never really going to see a team just come into T-side and just finish up. They're not gonna. I don't think that UB Knight is gonna win five in a row on T side and just end the game. I think it's gonna end up being a very close game, maybe 16-14, 16-12, and I honestly couldn't even tell you who that's gonna be in favor of because I don't even have a clue. Yeah, we are moving into round number 16 here, my friend, and this is the last map of the evening. I hope you guys all enjoyed these matches. Quite honestly, I couldn't have asked for more myself. This has been phenomenal CSGO to watch, and again, maybe not like we were saying, some of the tactics maybe a little questionable, but it makes some damn interesting county strike to watch, that's for certain. So, um, we are going to be moving into, I just learned some of those words, I swear I'm not drunk. <laughs> I'm just tired. Here we go into the pistol round. We do see Felon's going to be rocking the armor. The rest of the players, we got a kit on Wicked. The rest are just utilizing nades. So with a map like this with so many choke points, not a bad idea at all. And this is actually a rush through the ramp room by all the CT players. And usually you don't see this from a CT side. But this is definitely at least caught die off guard as they are going to be heading into lower bomb site. But what a crazy round as Remy is going to get tested, put down immediately by Kate. And they're going to be moving out into the site right now. 4v4 situation. Lopez trying to work the flank. Coming around. Will be able to take down Potter. Checks up to K-Strong as well. Gets that frag. Bomb goes down. Goes flying. Miss Harvey. And a 1v3 now. Won't be able to make it happen. And Code. They start that climb. They start the CT side domination that they require to close off this map. Die had fantastic position. She knew everything that was happening. They're pushing ramp. Let's get down secret right now. But she peaked. She took a duel she didn't need to take, and ultimately she got 2 v one got taken down. If Dai just held the corner and waited for one of them to maybe push Squeaky, she could have even got more information or a kill that would have helped their team out. Instead, she gets dropped early, and then the rest of the team just ends up in this kind of like... I don't even know what to call it. They were just kind of running all over the place like chickens with their heads cut off, trying to get into lower and get that bomb planted, which never ended up happening. So the round that they really needed to win goes in favor of Code. But again, the Tech 9 on UB United has proved pretty strong before. Doesn't look like it's going to work out here as Lopez gets three. RV, Die, and Dim all dropped. Finally pulling out the USP to finish off K-Strong. I believe that was uh, Trevsta interrupting the ace there. This is what you expect to see from the CT side of Duke. <laughs> yeah, and we're going to see if UB, UB United has what it takes to kind of get through the the rough rounds, the grind, which is T-side Nuke. They honestly, if they even just got that plant, and they were so darn close on that pistol round to getting that plant, that would have just spelled... <laughs> Again, obviously, you optimally want to win that round, but honestly, it would have put them in such a better position here. But regardless, they're going to be heading right into ramp room, and Remy, 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 he will get four. Felon will burn one to death, and that is going to be another round for Cody and... Or, sorry, Cody. Cody, as, uh, as they're going to be padding their bank right now. And these are the rounds that we saw UB United kind of fumble in that they did lose pistol. So granted, they came back in the second round, but they were not able to kind of stuff these rounds flawlessly like we're seeing from Code. Already, we see $7,200 on Remy, and they have a full buy right now. Yeah, this is exactly what you expect to see from a team that's playing Nuke the way it's meant to be played. I don't really know exactly why UB United played Nuke CT side the way they were playing with the aggression. Maybe they just don't practice it that much. I know that, in general, Nuke is hated in North America. Uh, it's probably the most vetoed map when you have the option. Most teams don't even try to veto it, though, because they know that no one's ever going to pick it. Um, Nuke is definitely not well-liked. It's one of those maps where you love it for the nostalgia, but you hate actually playing it. So... I, I don't know. Maybe they just aren't really experienced on Nuke. I thought that they would definitely have the advantage starting CT side, being a, a more solid team with more experience together, but maybe I was wrong. Yeah, we're going to find out here as 11 to 7 is a scoreline. Trevsta taking down Miss Harvey. K Strong going down as well. And 
This is uh, a round where, at the very least, you want to do a lot of economic damage to the CTs, but so far it isn't going to be happening as only one death on Lopez. Like we're saying, this is the way CT side nuke usually plays out. And UB Knighted, they have that round lead, but their stomachs must have been sinking the minute they lost that pistol round. They are in a rough spot right now, and every round this gets harder. It, it's not going to get easier from here on out. You need to start putting rounds on the board, and although this is probably not going to be the one that does so in your next buy one, they really need to get just one and start that grind. Like I was saying, on the T side here, they need to make it happen. And we do see UB United playing a bit of leapfrog here, getting onto T roof quick, executing some boosts to get onto Mini, and they're going to drop that op outside. That's Trev's to down. Here comes the push towards heaven, and Remy's going to get caught out as wow. well. So the 2K there for Potter with the Tech 9 picking up that AWP, and there's going to be a man coming up from ramp going towards hell. And uh, this is quite an interesting eco here. Look at the boosts coming in from UB United. They're going to put a man in heaven already, unless this man coming around from outside. I thought I saw one outside. Maybe not. Uh, that's Wicked inside the vent. So X-Ray playing tricks with me. He's uh, right next to the vent inside sight. He is peeking up or he knows there's going to be someone there. Dim Wisely not peeking just yet. Just kind of playing time here. Lopez coming out Ooh. of hut is going to drop Dim with a nice headshot. Making it four versus three here. But still a really solid eco round from UB United. Still have the bomb in their possession. And they're just kind of playing the clock right now trying to feel it out. They do only have 33 seconds left on the round. They're going to have to commit somewhere. As Lopez gets another one, that's Potter down. Now a three versus three, and the 2K dropped by the other 2K. And that's Potter and Lopez going back and forth here. Wicked gets one that's die down, and all of a sudden it is a three versus two with 15 seconds left. It looked like UB United was maybe going to just run right into inside sight. Instead, Lopez shuts things down with a 4K. Miss Harvey getting a kill towards the end there. That was Wicked drop, but Lopez really the uh, key player for code in that round. Taking round number nine for code in round 20. And coming into 21 here, we're going to see the buy from UB United. And hopefully they'll, they'll start to get at least some momentum going on T-side. Otherwise, code's just going to run away with this. Yeah, and it's great that they did some economic damage there. But you can see, look at the banks of the CT side. It's too late for that. It's quite honestly, it's really, it's going to be difficult to break their bank. Yeah, you need to do it still if you want to win this match. But they needed that round. And what that looked like to me is they got the picks and then they, they went conservative. They, they needed to utilize that aggression. That's what got them the first two frags, and then they went passive. They went and tried to just work slow peaks, and it didn't work out in their favor. So we are going to see Trevsta getting two beautiful frags there as Potter is able to finally fire back. Lopez will take down Die, and, and a 2v4 situation is on our hands as we do see another frag here for Potter. She was hitting her shots earlier in the night with the AWP. Let's see if she can continue to do so as Dim making it a 2v2. This is looking a little bit more reminiscent of what we saw in the first half. Just these crazy oh. frags back and forth, but Remy through that squeaky door, just that tiny crack there we'll be able to get that frag and now dim 1v2 does have the lower bomb site but is it going to be enough as 30 seconds still left on the clock they did hear that the vents dropped we are going to see wicked jumping down right away and that's actually going to oh just spraying straight into the smoke here as dim is able to get out of there for a moment but just couldn't find the perfect crosshair angle couldn't find the frag and that's going to be another one for code as these rounds are getting close but again with the bank that we see on code they don't care they're getting them they, they're getting the rounds and that's all that matters at this point yeah dim was actually looking really good to maybe take that round the smoke came out they knew that she was going to be lower if she baited the plant right then she probably could have ran behind silo had enough time to hide and then the opera would have been stuck trying to spam the smoke she could have taken him down made it a 1v1 instead i think that dim just got maybe a little bit too ahead of herself and she wasn't able to make things happen there but the push inside here working out a little bit as dies able to take down sv but Lopez taking down Die and Harvey. Trebsta takes down two as well. Falloon dropping the last one standing. So that all just sort of was the epitome of this game here. UB United gets an entry frag and just can't really f follow up with it. And now we have that dreaded tie score here on Nuke. And Code is just chaining round after round. We got 11-9 on Remy. 9K on Felon. This is just uh, not really looking good for the UB United squad. 
Yeah, and it's tied. Uh, it's just UB United's got to be kicking themselves, saying we if we just had a couple more of those, like if they got pistol on CT, there's so many things that are going through your head and none of which you need to listen to right now. All of which you need to push down, not think about, take this round for a round. UB United still in this match. Again, if they lose here, they are going to drop this best of three. They're going to fall down to that lower bracket. So they're not out of the tournament quite yet. Um, they still definitely could battle back here, but Trevsta and Remy both getting frags early on here. K-Strong finally able to fire back. That is definitely what they require. K-Strong now going to be smoking out into the ramp room, covering her bases from the side of Hell there and gets a beautiful frag onto Fel and Lopez takes down Miss Harvey. 2v3 situation, 50 seconds on the clock. This is a doable round, but not if Wicked has anything to do about it. And K Strong gets smoked out in radio. She's got to be like, who does that? Who does that? It's someone who just discovered the bomb in the middle of lobby and wants you nowhere near it. And time's going to run out before she's really going to have a chance to make a play here. 30 seconds left on the round. By the time the smoke fades, she's going to be sitting at around 25. And at that point, she's got to grab the bomb and run. And I just don't think this is going to go her way. It's going to be 12-11 in favor of Code, unless she does something that I've never seen before, which might require some sort of speed hack-spin hack combination. Yeah, definitely a combo. Maybe some teleportation as well. And that's going to be Lopez cleaning that up. And Code, they got the round lead, and it's got to be feeling beautiful. Code is probably just blooming with confidence right now. Although they want to make sure that they just continue to close these out, they don't need to change anything. There's been pretty much no chink in their armor. Everything has been working on the defense for Code. UB Knighted, except for like those couple rounds here or there, but I would almost just credit those to the individual kind of 1v1 duels rather than maybe the strategies that were being performed. But regardless, 24th round underway. We are going to see a boost up here. Die already on top of Twinkie. Potter as well. Trevster trying to land the frag. Whiffs three in a row. Finally lands one on Potter. Will be able to get another one on Dim. And they really needed to put Trevster down way earlier than that. But he wasn't hitting the shots, but was at least deking properly. As we do see Wicked coming up from Secret. Kate Strong will be able to get that frag. And that's going to be uh, Felon going down as well. So Remy and Lopez, 2v3. And the flank and is real. Remy, <laughs> Remy, the P90. That's not supposed to work. The Pro 90 is real. And Lopez actually in a great spot right now. This is one of obviously the benefits to uh, Nuke is that the rotates are very, very quick. So two very lit T side players. Technically, they should be able to kind of work a situation where maybe they can peak at the same time. But that's not the situation right there. That is exactly how you peak one by one. And Code picks up the round. Yeah, Lopez has been the clutch player, really, for this team. Every time he's been in a situation where he needs to get multiple frags, he does, and that's why he's sitting at 27 and 18 right now. Top fragging for Code, and uh, you have to wonder how the morale of UB United is at this point. They've got to be so frustrated, and ultimately, this is Nuke in, you know, its finest. Nuke is like... You can have a great CT side. Not that their 11-4 was great. You know, scoreboard-wise, 11-4 is a decent CT side. But it just falls apart on the T side because the map is so one-sided and you start to just get in this position where your brain makes you lose even more because you just get so frustrated at the way the map is played out. Like, you can see Trevster right now should have been taken down there, but instead he gets K-Strong before being dropped by Die, And they're already in a 3v4 right now. As Miss Harvey was taken down as well, she is the top fragger, but not by a whole lot. The second half is really not really uh, working out for any of these players. Yeah, that was actually, I don't know if he caught it, but Felon pushed through ramp room, just pushed through his own smoke and just killed Miss Harvey, walked on back. So that was definitely a frustrating moment there as UB knighted. Uh, not a heck of a lot to work in. 3v4 here. 45 seconds on the clock, and we're going to see Wicked taking down Die. Two players left in Dim and Potter, both residing in the lobby room right now, as Potter is going to be peeking out a squeaky. That smoke on Hut means that they have pretty much one place to go, and that's through Squeaky Door. They could opt to go ramp, but it's just too late. It's too late. Wicked now dropping down Potter. Dim, last one on the field, will be able to take that frag, and a good shot in that. We'll peek out 1v3 situation. We'll be able to get Lopez 1v2. 10 seconds left. Oh, if Dim could have got 
Remy there, that would have been huge, but the bomb needs to be planted and should be able to force this peak here, and that's going to be a beautiful crossfire by the CTs, 14 to 11. This is, uh, this is just getting out of hand here. UB United not able to win a single round so far. Code has won 10 straight. Now, obviously, UB United is going to have the, the loss bonus for their economy, but it's just all falling apart for them. They, they really didn't have a solid CT side, but the scoreboard still went in their favor 11-4. So they were definitely in a position to win this, and it was so much weight on that pistol round. And losing that pistol round, it's just like that. It's that. It's the kick in the gut. You're just like, ugh, I, I, we lost the pistol round. That's it. We lose. It's almost like you you, you immediately put yourself in that position where it's like, I, I lost because we lost pistol round. We, we're in a shot now, or we had a shot, and now we have nothing. We do see some smokes raining out outside here, and they are trying to make a play for it. Bomb is going to make its way into secret. The op not able to connect through the smoke. Dim's going to get tagged down to 67 HP, and they're just working their way towards this lower bomb site. Hopefully, getting that bomb plan off, and that would be big right now. Code only needing to win one to put it on uh, match point here. And here comes the smoke from Dim raining out. Remy sitting at the top of ramp with that AWP. Able to take down one, but K-Strong with a nice headshot in response. Wicked SV takes down Miss Harvey. It's a four versus three right now, and Bomb is going to get take, or planted as K-Strong drops it down. Die coming out of vents. Takes down two. Wicked SV and Lopez drop, but it's now Felon and Trevsa versus Die here. A 1v2 situation. Bomb planted around the edge of Silo, and there goes the fake. Felon's going to get spotted out here. Oh no, Die does not peak in time. Tries to take some down or takes her down with the op. And that is all she wrote for this round here. Coming into round 27, we're gonna see UB United facing codes, game point, and match point. Yeah, wow, okay. So my mic was muted. <laughs> That's what happened. I was like playing around with my mic mid cast. I was like, oops. Anyhow, regardless. What's this button? 27. Do? I know, I'm like, what is this fancy little mute looking button do? Anyhow. We are back, and UB United, they're going to have to push this to OT here as round 27 is underway. And unfortunately, like we've been stating all half, there really just hasn't been that strategy that's clearly kind of blatantly been the go-to for UB United. Well, maybe there has been, but they're getting crushed everywhere. We just saw Remy, that's Felon, Wicked. Now K-Strong will be able to fire back, but Potter in a 1v4 tries to make it happen. We'll get two frags. 1v2 situation, but two or less. That's going to be Lopez taking that and winning this map. That is going to be the end of this best of three. Code taking it two to one in one of the craziest best of threes I have personally ever witnessed. Yeah, definitely. You know, it looked like UB United was was uh, poised to take this 2-0. They took the first map very strong on cash. Second map, they didn't start out great, but they started building some momentum in the second half, and then it looked like they had that chance to come back and win it, ultimately losing a very close game to Code. And then they came into Nuke, and they had one of the strangest CT sides I've ever seen on the map. But uh, they ended up losing to Code 2-1. to one. Still, though, I am very impressed with their play. Uh, they, they played great on the first two maps. The last map, I don't know what happened. They, things just sort of weren't clicking, and maybe it's just not a map they practice that often. Nonetheless, I have been your host, Bach. With me is Sprawl. You can follow us on Twitter. That's at Bach underscore TV, and I think yours is at Official Sprawl. You betcha. You betcha. And I believe we are doing a little bit of giveaway action here. So hang tight, guys, because I know we did hit that factory new M4A4 Desert Strike um, goal. So we're at least going to go do that. So hang tight, guys. We're going to run a quick ad. I'm just going to figure out from uh, from David, the one and only CEO of RGN, figure out what's going on with that giveaway. Again, we do have that Twitter giveaway. If you go and follow Most Spaz and go RGN, you'll see that there is a tweet that you can retweet. And that is how you enter into that one. And I do believe, unless I'm mistaken, I believe that that hasn't been rolled yet. I'm not sure when it gets rolled. Um, but again, stay tuned for that. So guys, we'll be back in just a minute or two. And uh, we'll let you know what's going on with the giveaway. So hang tight, guys.
Monsters live inside our souls, waiting to come alive, turning our hearts cold. My blood is black, it sees through the cracks. If I could take you back, if I could, fall in love. All right, guys, I am back. And uh, we are going to be doing that sub giveaway. So just a heads up, guys, because it is kind of not that it's a, a small, small it, it's a smaller giveaway. We're doing this for active subs, guys. So this is for active subs only. The factory new M4A4 Desert Strike, beautiful M4. Um, we are going to be giving away the keyword right now. So it's going to be exclamation mark six map hype. So I will type it in just like this. All right, there you go. If you can spell as good as I can, um, that is going to be the keyword. So, guys, go ahead and type that in just once, just once. Please, no spamarino. Zam can s definitely spell like I can. <laughs> um, Hito, I can't stream. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I, I need to go to bed after this. Unfortunately, I work in eight and a half hours, um, so I'm going to be going to sleep after this actually i'm gonna be eating um and then i'm gonna be going to sleep because i am starving i've been casting since like is that like 6 30 or something like that i don't know it's been a long night but it's been phenomenal and honestly all of us here couldn't ask for a better night uh for night one of the new year's open so again guys just type that into the chat we're gonna leave that open for at least a minute or two just so we can have everybody jumping in here um bach works in four hours oh good lord <laughs> Uh, that is horrendous. No fun. Anyhow, six and a half for me, so just get over it. Oh, I need my beauty sleep, though. I need it. I need it. And I didn't get a lot of sleep last night. On an... Anyhow, regardless, I'm not going to complain any longer. I should be back on... I don't know what the plan is for tomorrow. I know we should be doing more matches here. Um, I should be able to get a stream in. So if you guys want to follow me, I do stream on my channel anytime that I'm not streaming on this channel, which is pretty much every day, again, that I'm not casting on this channel. Or if it's after the event, I'll go and stream as well. So I just do pugs and just do lots of giveaways. I surf. I, I do some... Now I've started to randomly play SimCity. That's kind of weird, but lots of fun for me. Um, so yeah, you can follow me. Just if you click on my name in chat, you can go ahead and follow me that way. And uh, yeah, we are about to do this giveaway. So last chance, guys. We have... 19 total subs entered now 20 total subs entered into our giveaway so we're going to leave that open for just another moment or two and uh, then we're going to close that off and get underway